questions like, you know, have you ha heard this taught anywhere else before? So, for example, the um, the uh, brother of Jared and the Stones. And I said, no, but I I'm sure I can't be alone. Yeah. So I started looking online on, on YouTube, and I eventually did. I found one. I found w uh, uh, an LDS YouTuber that, uh, that uh, talked about it. And it was like a five-minute video, but he did mention that, uh, you know, if you go down to the footnotes, you go back to the story of Noah— you, you can see that this was a stone that shone forth, and so there's a connection here. It was like a five-minute video. So it, it didn't take it, – it took me about an hour or two, but I finally found one. I went through about ten videos. I've been through – I've been through, I don't even know, 20, 50 videos on, uh, on Priestcraft. I, I haven't found one, not one. And so uh, that's, uh, that's one we're going to have to wait for, like, the, the name of the church to change. Just going to have to wait for a prophet to come out and say something, and then all of a sudden it'll be popular. Exactly. Yeah. The one that the one that uh, I need to get better at is that now they don't want you to even say LDS. And it's like, oh my gosh. Like, uh, like um, <laughs> so it's like, I, I need to get out of that habit. So now it's like, I have to skip out of that because I would be like, no, I'd rather, I would rather call myself Latter Day Saint than Mormon. But now, now you have you well, you say right. the, the full name, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. But I, I, I still, you know, there's a still a lot of even uh, in talks and stuff, you'll hear uh, apostles say, um, the saints are expected to do this, the saints, and so I still think that's okay to refer to the members, just not the church. But I, I could be it's wrong on that. Church, yep. What are your thoughts? Do no, you think that's right. okay? Well, I was so I was reading uh, President Ballard's talk last night, and in there, you know, he's talking about like our identities and what we should be known as. And he said, you know, point blank, President Nelson has said that we should call ourselves members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. Um, is there any other uh, title or anything else that would be? Um, more important than that so but i i don't know in my pra in practice whatever like if i'm doing uh, ministering at the jail we've always said the full name of the church uh, and then like if they're still kind of confused then i go to like you know uh, latter-day saints and if they're still confused then that's when i would go to like mormon and, and then they'd be like oh okay but it's interesting when you say the full name of the church because there's like, there's real power in just saying Christ's name, and and then connecting yourself with that, um, you know more more so than other churches I think. Um, so I definitely need to I definitely need to get on Mrs. Scribe on that one then. So whenever so whenever I'm saying something I need to be like okay as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. But see, the, the, I would say the problem with that is is that then all of a sudden when you start doing that on YouTube videos, people are going to start saying you're speaking for the church. And that's – so it's like, uh, yeah, but yeah, we can't win I guess. But – so no. Yeah, if you just say as, a, as saints, you know, we should do this or we – you know, but uh, yeah, you start saying the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, man. I've gotten some pretty nasty emails about that. So we got twenty people in here. Yeah, people don't like that. I don't know if you've you've had that, but you didn't. I don't know. Did you did you have a lot of or do you have a lot of people that were upset about uh, uh, not saying before every video that you don't represent the church? Uh, no. Oh man. People just no. it's something in my something in my I voice. Like... I don't I don't know what it is. Something something in my voice. People just uh, <laughs> <laughs> they feel like they they have to e email me An and tell automatic... Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it is about you, but something about your voice that makes me want to punch you. Ah, yes. That'd be <laughs> me. <laughs> that would be me. That that's you. <laughs> Oh, wow. We got a lot of Boise, Idaho uh, representation in here. I grew up in Boise. I went to Bora. So that's uh, that's interesting. Got a lot of Boise representation in here. That's the first time here. Uh, Pocatello. My parents are actually moving to CUNA. Pocatello is... Uh, there's a... <laughs> I, I won't say this. 
I will say it. Pocatello and Lewiston have a uh, bad reputations in in Idaho. Uh, oh wait, I'm talk I'm talking to somebody from Idaho. He'll know that. Ugh. But um, Pocatello's get they're getting a temple, so it'll change now. It'll change now. Uh, all, I, I think so. McCall's gorgeous. Yeah, I, I yeah, McCall is gorgeous. You have to have about a billion dollars to live there, but it's definitely gorgeous. Yeah. Well, welcome everyone. We got thirty people in here, so we can start. Um, today we have a we're starting a series on the lectures on faith, and we got Blake here. So excited to do this because I've loved the lectures on faith, and I, I've been. Uh, I don't know, pushing is the right word, but I've been suggesting, nudging that that people maybe should read these with the teaching of the prophet Joseph Smith because they are just so good. And so this last conference when President Nelson, you know, gave his talk and and so strongly on faith and then said, hey, uh, I'm going to quote lectures on faith while I'm doing this. I thought now, hey, this is a good opportunity. We need to get on, get on the ball on this. Or as uh, uh, Brother Hiram Andrews says, get on the stick. But um so I'm really glad that we can we can start doing this. I, I hope people um, take a take a, uh, an effort, a conscientious effort as we go through these to, to really take the time to understand them and, and digest them. Uh, you can get mul uh, uh, copies of this uh, the lectures on faith for free on multiple sites. And so if you get a get a copy of it, print them off. It's really good. There is. Um, uh, a free copy of it that I've put together on my website. It's a little bit different in that I've jammed it all into a single document. So you can just print one document. It's one PDF or one word, which is a little different than other sites, but you can find free in a multitude of locations. So I hope you take the time to do that. As always, that's found in the description box of the video. You can click on and head on over there to the family website and, um, and download that for free there as we're going through this. Also, what we're doing in each one of these firesides, you can also download that uh, for free on the, on the family website and print that one off as well. Um, also in the description box of the video, you are going to find the um, email for Blake, who's actually with us today, for uh, the Discord. And so if you would like to join that Discord, which is kind of like Facebook without any of the negative ads and, and any of the... Babylon, I get. I guess it could still have Babylon in it, but it, it's if we bring it in, so it's it's not it's not hoisted in our face. And so, if you want to join that, send an email to Blake, and the and that link or that email address is found in the description box of the video. And so, with that out of the way, did I miss anything? Was uh, no. I, I would just add that I uh, after conference. Uh, especially after President Nelson's talk, I felt directed to study the lectures on faith um, personally. And so I thought it was interesting when you also said, hey, I think we should maybe talk about the lectures on faith. I'm like, oh, perfect. Yes. Yeah. And you know, and that's another thing that, that, that comes up, man. You'll get the revelation and inspiration that you need to go do something. And then you'll find that it, it, it's it's not it's unique to you, but it's also unique to the group. It's also unique to his saints, right? He's, he's trying to get us all at, you know, on, on the same page. And so I, I love, I love that stuff. When, when you receive revelation, you'll start doing something and then you'll find out your wife or friend has received similar, similar revelation. And, and you know, it, it just flows together. I, I love that stuff. I mean, it's those, uh, what Elder Bednar identified in, in Nephites, what I would call tender mercies. They're those those things that that they don't they don't necessarily mean a lot, but they're tender and they're mercies that just remind you that he's there and that he's real. And so I I love that. So I will start with a prayer and then we'll let uh, Blake introduce himself and and then we'll go right into this. So uh, I'll say that prayer. Father in heaven, we are thankful for this day and thankful for our many blessings. Father, we're thankful for the opportunity we have to fast. Father, we're thankful for those wonderful saints that that have courage to uh, put forth their names um, f for us to fast for in faith. Father, we're thankful for them and we're thankful for their faith that they show in thee and the power of fasting. 
Thankful, Father, for the blessings that we're already starting to receive from fasting and praying to the in unity. And we pray tonight, Father, and pray for thy spirit to attend us so that we may speak thy words and understand thy will and not our own. And we pray that, Father, that the technology will work and that we can have a fireside where we can discuss thy will and doctrine in a way that's pleasing to thee. And we pray, Father, in um, love and gratitude for all that thou hast done for us. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen. You know, Amen. I actually remembered something else while praying there, and that was thank you, everyone, for participating in, in fasts whenever you can. Um, uh, if you join the Discord, there will be names listed there, or the people will put forward names and 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 um, uh, the reason to fast form in there. I will summarize it once per week, and I'll just throw it up on YouTube in a in the community tab. And with, with the names that people have provided and just a very short summary of what they've asked to fast for. And so I will post that once a week. So thank you, everyone, for um, taking the time to do that and, and be a part of that. Because uh, I know that that um, that it has opened up doors from heaven and, and people have talked about miracles that have happened from it. And so... I'm I'm really grateful for everyone to do that, and also I'm thankful for thankful for you providing names. I know that takes a lot of courage on your part, um, in fasting and a lot of faith in the Lord that it actually means something. And by doing that, it enables me to um, have more meaningful fasts. And I think there was uh, another individual that said the same thing. I think it might have been R- R- Reba Reba R E B A. I think that she might have said that she and, and and I'm in the same boat. She said that she fasted every week. I'm in the same boat, and sometimes the fast can become really mundane, and it really helps me focus on an individual that I know, and their family, and um, and give more purpose to that. So uh, thank you for helping my fasts. Oh, okay, it was uh, Sister Cook? Thank you for that. Yeah, I I, I feel exactly the same way. So. Anyway, so we'll let Blake introduce himself, and then we'll go into this. Okay. Well, I I feel like I missed out a few weeks ago when you had the uh, fireside where you talked about everybody's waking up story. So I thought I'd share just to get uh, you know a different perspective of, of who I am and, and kind of where I come from uh, for everybody. Um, so... I started feeling it was about 2014. I started feeling like this emptiness, um, like there was something missing in my life. And I didn't immediately connect it with the gospel. So I started to, to look in the world for things that I thought would, you know, satisfy me, give me fulfillment. Um, so one of the first things I started getting into was, um, trapping oddly enough uh, trapping animals uh, here and that allowed me to get out into nature and you know to to um, to to be able to do something that also made a little bit of money but yet I still felt kind of that emptiness and the next thing that kind of I got into was guns um, you know I, I, I started buying a few guns I started learning all about guns, things like that. And same effect, like there still was something that, that was missing really. And then I kind of have had, I had an experience where a lot of people have had, where they go to uh, the internet to look for, I guess, spiritual nourishment. I think a lot of people have, have felt that, you know, churches, uh, church has its place, but for those of us that are seeking further enlightenment and uh, just really seeking to draw closer to the Lord, sometimes we can't always find that at church. And so I started getting into uh, certain podcasts um, and other uh, figures and whatnot, and they had some good things to say, but I, I still felt like it was lacking. And So, you know, I I really decided to go out on my own to start actually trying to study the gospel. 
And it wasn't until uh, basically, uh, what was it? It was about 2015. I, I got this prompting to start. I needed to go to the to the temple every week. And so I started doing that and I started becoming more involved in family history. And that, that really began for me to fill in kind of some of that need um, because I started feeling more of the, of the light of Christ. Um, I started feeling a greater love for my ancestors, a greater connection to my ancestors. And so as I did that, I went to the temple, the spirit automatically just it came more into my life. And little did I know that all this was really preparing us for the loss of our, uh, our child that we would experience uh, at the end of 2017, um, where uh, we found out that our, our son basically was, he was not gonna be able to live outside the womb. And the Lord uh, gave me some personal revelation, gave me some, some manifestations um, that helped me to prepare for that. And so as I've looked back on my life and I've seen, okay, all these steps, like that's really what it was preparing me for. And, and losing our son really was my wake up um, to be able to see the gospel in a, in a completely different light. And since that time, it's been a mixture of, of, of trying to, to get healing from that experience, but also trying to draw closer to the Lord. And um, one of those things that I felt that has brought me healing and that has brought me closer to the Lord was, you know, actually starting my own YouTube channel where I was intensely focused on sharing some of the things that I had learned in my personal studies, but also um, continuing to study and then continuing to share. And I don't know if Mike could feel this same way, but as you do that, it almost feels like it almost feels like the revelation just flows. The, 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 the connections that you make in scripture um, that you'd never seen before. It, it seems like when you're purposely trying to share those things with others, that those, those things just come. And so that's my wake up story. That's my, that's how I've come to be where I'm at. And um, yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. And I, I would say that a big part of that is also willing to share it for free. Um, I, I, I find that there are some people that will get revelation and they'll kind of they'll get a shiny stone. And then as soon as they try to sell it, uh, you can just see it turn to ash and, uh, and then they become, they become really locked on to one way of viewing things as opposed to just trying to discover the truth and share it. And and then they become very uh, defensive of a, a viewpoint because they're selling that viewpoint. And so you become very rigid in, in your thinking versus, you know, if you're learning and sharing for free, there, there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, you know what? I, I, I think I might have gotten this little off. I think you're right. I, I think that this is a, a better fit for these scriptures. And so, yeah, I, it's... And, and, and by the way, that's part of being humble. And, and if you're humble, you're teachable. And if you're teachable, Christ is going to teach you. And uh, and he's not going to give you stuff that you're not going to, if you're not going to be willing to share with other people. So yeah, I've, I've definitely, I've definitely found that in my life. So, um, so today um, in the lectures on faith, the way we're going to be doing this, if you've downloaded the, the uh, document from the website, um, what we're going to be doing is we're, the way he set this up is uh, is very cool. And Blake might actually um, talk about this a little bit before we, before we go into it. But um, it, it's very cool. And, and it's how I learned to study like this. Uh, when I went on my mission, uh, my mission president made us study the lectures on faith. And so that was the first time that I was introduced to him. And I was shown this style and I've never gone back. And so it's a it's the style uh, of how we need to go about looking for 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 truth. 
And, uh, and so I, I loved it. And I'm, I'm eternally grateful for my mission president for, for, for sharing these with, with us as missionaries. But so what we're going to be doing is I will read. Uh, so the way the lectures on faith are set up is that there's, there's, uh, Joseph would teach something. So there's the lecture. And then after the lecture, he would set up, uh, you know, a ton of questions. And I think in one of them, there was like over like 70 or almost a hundred I mean, there's a ton of questions down there below and uh, designed to get you to be able to answer the things. And so he provides the answers up above and then below he'll provide questions to make sure you've learned what you were supposed to learn. So in this, we're going to flip it a little bit. I'm going to jump first down to uh, the question and I'm going to read the question. And then I'm going to read the part from the lectures on faith that it dealt with, and then I'm going to read Joseph Smith's answer that he provides down below. And so that that's the order in which we're, we're going to go through this, just so that it makes uh, makes sense as we're going through that. And we're going to be going over lecture one today. Um, I did not, I, I don't think that going over the preface to it uh, is a worth an entire fireside, but I, I'd give it a quick read over. There's one or two quotes in there that I've used uh, uh that I, I, I absolutely love, but it's a really good intro to, to what this is. And so this is lecture one, and we're only going to do half of lecture one today. Uh, and so that's what uh, we're going to be doing. Um, yeah. And so question number one that Joseph provides here in the bottom is, what is theology? Now, this is an interesting one because Joseph Smith didn't actually even go over this in the lecture, but yet it's his very first question down below. So I, I thought that was really interesting. And the answer that Joseph Smith provided was, it is that revealed science which treats on the being and attributes of God, his relations to us, the dispensations of his providence, his will with respect to our actions and his purposes with respect to our end. And he actually just looked it up in a dictionary and he provides the reference Buck's uh, Theological Dictionary, page 582. And so that's the first question. And, um, and that's Joseph Smith's answer. And I'll toss it over to Blake. Okay, so... We've talked about it a little bit in our group. I, I saw today that people were discussing the meaning of words. And I think there's, we're seeing an effort both by Satan, but also just by society in general uh, to change the meaning of certain words. So when uh, Joseph Smith says that theology is revealed science, I think us living here today in 2021 have an idea of what like science is, right? But we have to ask ourselves, is that necessarily the definition that, that Joseph would have understood? And one resource I always go to when I'm seeking to understand the meaning of certain words, um, even if they're familiar words and I think I know what they mean, I still go to this, uh, it's the 1828 Webster's Dictionary. And that will give you a good idea of what the definition of science is. So in that dictionary, it says that science is, in a general sense, knowledge or certain knowledge, uh, the comprehension or understanding of truth or facts by the mind. So we have a few different words here that kind of help us give an idea of science. First of all, we're not just talking about chemistry or uh, biology or anything like that. Um, Science really is the understanding of truth or the, uh, the gaining of certain knowledge. And I, I like how they use the phrase certain, because this isn't just something that we can just read in a textbook, right? This is something that is revealed to us by God and that we will gain an absolute certain uh, testimony of its truthfulness as it's revealed to us. So... And, and as we see this definition, it's, it's very consistent with it, what's in the Doctrine and Covenants. In DNC 9324, we learn that truth is a knowledge of things as they are 
and as they were, and as they are to come. So as God reveals uh, this science or this truth, it is a certain knowledge of things as they were, as they are, and as they are to come. So when we look at this question of theology, uh, for us as Latter-day Saints, reading the lectures on faith, how should we understand theology? Theology is the revealed understanding of truth or knowledge about who God is, what kind of a being he is, and what he expects of us. And so as we go through all of the lectures, that's what the focus is on. And that's what Joseph's focus is in this format, is really to give us truth, to then allow questions to be asked and answered, as well as to give uh, supporting evidence for that truth, uh, to bolster it. And the way that it's specifically done in the Lectures on Faith is by the Scriptures or the Word of God. So I, along with Micah, I believe that this format is extremely helpful for us to be able to understand faith, and uh, particularly to be well grounded in how Joseph understood it, how it was revealed to him, and, and also to go all the way back to Adam and Eve and understand how it was revealed to them. So here's a here's a question as we're going through this. Um, if somebody were to say, um, what is the theology of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints, what would be what would be the correct answer to that? So you, Blake just you, you he just said it, but let's think about that, right? Because this is a question we get asked a lot. So so when people get upset when when Micah says we need to be united on on doctrine, yeah, well, how do we determine that? What is um, uh, theology of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, and, and how should we or how do we go about proving that? Matt explains why we can't use the world's definitions, and that's exactly right. So we can't use the world's definitions to do that. We have to then use this and have to have this understanding, this grounding of truth is the knowledge of things as they are, as they were, and as they are to come. And what is the only thing that we know that that, that is? Well, the Savior said the heavens and the earth will pass away. So what, what, what is he saying there? They might not be. But what will always be? What is always constant? What will be is true in the past, true in the present, and will be true in the future? It's Christ's words. That is where we should be grounding this on because his words shall never fail. And so that's uh, that's where we get this truth is knowledge of things as they are. And we understand that truth by the mind, right? And so this, the, all really good things as, as we go through this and understand it. And that's a really important one for us to understand before we get into it. You understand, or we understand, that the problems that we're experiencing right now in the church with the divisions would would this is the very first thing that everyone needs to study except before going into any sort of understanding on anything and if we had this as our launching off point if we all had this as our launching off point we might bump along the road as we go down the road but i'll know that i'm on the same road as blake Maybe Blake's standing on the left side of the road, and I'm standing on the right side, and, I, and we're both saying, eh, I think it's closer over here, And uh, but we're still on the road. We're still bouncing down the road. And so this is, you know, but other people who would say, well, I think it might be based on opinions. I might think it might be based on, or as Matt said, uh, definitions in the world. Well, you're going off a completely separate road. Uh, there's absolutely no way that we're going to arrive at, 
at any kind of common understanding or um, or grounding based off of that. We're just not. So, um, was there any other, any questions on that before we go on? I don't think there is. Okay, so I'll just read the next one. So the next question is, let me jump to it on the thing before I forget. If I forget to change the question, just let me know. Question two, what is the first principle in this revealed science? So once again, we're going to have to remember what Blake said um, with the definition of what science meant. Um, and then we'll read what it says in the lectures on faith. It says one, paragraph one, Faith being the first principle in revealed religion and the foundation of all righteousness necessarily claims the first place in a course of lectures which are designed to unfold to the understanding the doctrine of Christ. And Joseph Smith's answer was one word, faith. Okay, so we have, we've done a fireside where we talked about the, what the definitions were for uh, doctrine, commandments, principles, uh, all of those things. So if you've, if you've listened to that fireside already, you'll kind of have an understanding of where I'm going with this. But for those of you that haven't, let's get an understanding, first of all, about uh, when, when uh, Joseph says that faith is the first principle in revealed religion. What is a principle? So I like the definition that Elder Bednar gave us in this last general conference. Uh, he has a way of just getting straight to the point. He says that a gospel principle is a doctrinally based guideline for the righteous exercise of moral agency. Principles derive from broader gospel truths and provide direction and standards as we press forward on the covenant path. Okay, so gospel principles are rooted in truth. And as we talked about in our presentation about doctrine, doctrine is also rooted in truth. And so these are these, these principles that are revealed by God, these are things that will not change, right? Because truth is a knowledge of things as they are, as they were, and as they are to come. So these principles can be applied by anyone that has ever lived in this in this Earth's history. Um, it doesn't matter if you're male, female, doesn't matter what language you speak. Um, the same applying the same principle in your life will yield the same results. So as I was thinking about this statement about faith being the first principle in revealed religion. I thought, where in Scripture does it say that faith was the first principle revealed? Or, in a, in a, saying it in another way, when did God first reveal to man the principle of faith? So as I studied, this is a little difficult to, to find, and there's a lot of other principles that we're going to have to build on to understand this. And we'll go through all these in the presentation. But... If you go to Moses chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, this is where we learn where, where God first revealed the, the principle of faith. And it says, And I, the Lord God, commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. Nevertheless, thou mayest choose for thyself for it is given unto thee. But remember that I forbid it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So as we unpack this scripture to find where the principle of faith is, first we need to realize that the Lord in this scripture is giving Adam and he's giving Eve truth. Okay, what is the truth that he's giving them? It's the declaration that if they eat the fruit, they will die. Okay. Now, there's other understandings about what it means to die um, that are added um, you know, later on by the Lord, and they kind of learn what that means. But just that simple truth, if they eat the fruit, they will die. That is the truth. 
Now, that truth is something that they can choose to act upon in their lives. So I want to point out, faith here is not, it's not the promise that the Lord makes. But faith is the decision or the choice to act upon revealed truth. And I find it interesting here, and I, I hope you'll notice that Satan, his technique here, what does he try to do to Eve? He tries to disconnect Eve from light and truth, and by extension, the Lord. And he does this by questioning the validity of the Lord's declaration that they would die. In DNC 93, 39, it says, And that wicked one cometh and taketh away light and truth. So Satan, by introducing questions about what is truth or what is light, he seeks to destroy faith. And I think this is, you know, this is part of why Eve and Adam's choice to partake of the fruit um, their, their fall is actually such a blessing because by acting upon revealed truth, they came to actually understand and to know for themselves what the Lord had revealed. They came to know with a surety that if they ate the fruit, that they would die. So we too, from this experience, should be able to learn how the Lord reveals truth, how we act in faith, and we learn about the effects of faith, which is something that we'll talk about later on. But I hope that as we go through this, <clears throat> this idea of what truth is and how it's revealed, that will stick in your mind. Um, because truth and agency are really the two main uh, gospel doctrines that really help us to understand what faith is and how to exercise it. And it's amazing because this ties in perfectly with that scripture that Matt just provided. Because Satan comes in and the first thing he does is he gets you to question. Just like Blaze said, what is truth? What is light? Question it, right? Question it just a little bit. Just give a little door you know, uh, open a crack to them. And then before you know it, when we are ripe for destruction, we're no longer questioning what is truth and what is light. We are actively going out and saying light is dark and dark is light. What What's right is wrong. What's wrong is right. And uh, th that's when he's completely got us upside down. And uh, so that's a great, that was a great scripture uh, inclusion t from Matt there to, to get to the the last thing um so yeah um question number three was there any questions in here before we go uh, on promised land just asked uh, he just asked whether the actual partaking of the fruit was the first act of faith and i know in our you know in the way we traditionally think of the fall right the the old sectarian notion is that the fall of Adam and Eve was, it, it ruined everything, right? It was the worst possible thing that could happen. But in in revealed truth that we've received in this dispensation, we know that the, the choice of Adam and Eve was actually a blessing. And why was it a blessing? Because it was the first act of faith. It was a demonstration to us to show how faith operates in the world. And while all these, you know, some of these negative things came about, right? Spiritual, physical death. We have a perfect template to be able to understand faith and how it works. And also, uh, and also something for us, an unquenchable tie so that we can know that the Lord's word shall all be fulfilled. It, that gives us the first anchor that there, there was no leeway in, in the Lord's word. The Lord said something, and it was fulfilled literally and plainly. And and that gives us our first anchor point to know uh, I am Alpha and Omega, right? That gives us the Alpha, and it's not going to change. And so that gives us a, our, our our first anchor, the, the first uh, faith as a brother of Jared, 
right? The same way the Lord treated Adam and Eve is the, exactly the same way he's going to treat us, right? I am bound when you do what I say, but when you do not what I say, you have no promise. It, it's something as old as Adam and Eve, and it was proved there in that garden. All right, so... Um, <laughs> isn't it weird that here I am defending Eve and defending Eve and uh, everyone wants to talk about Emma. Anyway, so let's, uh, <laughs> seems totally backwards, doesn't it? But yeah, e e you know, people need to, people need to stop bagging on so, Eve. Uh, so not to interrupt you, Mike. Nope, it, that was it. Uh, Triumph of, of Zion asks, um, so are you saying that Eve understood what she was doing uh, to know she was acting in faith? My answer to that is no, she did not understand because that understanding didn't come until after she had acted in faith. And we'll go through uh, this word understanding and how that's connected to faith a little bit later on. But but no, I don't I don't think Eve understood. I think she she knew revealed truth. And she then was given that choice. She had that agency. She made that choice. Um, and therein, by making that choice, she acted in faith. Um, yeah, there was a there was definitely an, a a lack of knowing good from evil, and um, how much she knew and how much she didn't know. Um, we know that she didn't know everything because obviously that was part of the tr the fruit, and it it's why it's called uh, e uh, a transgression. And so it's it's a completely different word that was even used there. And so yes, um, Eve uh, Eve knew knew that her hand was going out. She knew she was eating the fruit. Um, she 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 knew some things, right? She, but she didn't have the totality, uh, what like Blake was describing. So yeah, I complete I I agree with what Blake was Blake said there. Hopefully, I didn't just make that worse. Um, <laughs> yeah so yeah so she she knew something like uh, she wasn't in a in a state of you know coma like what do you hypnosis like she they knew they were hypnosis. walking around a, yeah, no. yeah they knew they were walking around a garden they they knew uh they knew stuff but they, they didn't it was like a child and i think that's a perfect explanation because you know it's like a, a child walking around naked and you're just going what are you doing like my child spreading poop on my mirror door and I'm like, what are you doing? And uh, she knew what she was doing, but she didn't know what she was doing, right? So I, it's a perfect way to describe it. And so that's why we say they're very childlike. You know, uh, my, my daughter knew what she was doing, but she did not know the consequences of what she was doing for everyone else that was in the house. So, and she was driven out of my garden. So that, that that's a good... <laughs> That's a good contrast. Okay, so we'll go to question three here. And let me get here. Okay, so question three. Why is faith the first principle in this revealed science? So what it says in uh, the lecture on faith, faith being the first principle in revealed religion and the foundation of all righteousness necessarily claims the first place in a course of lectures which are designed to unfold to the understanding the doctrine of Jesus Christ. So then Joseph's answer to the question is, because it is the foundation of all righteousness. He then turns you to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. 1 John chapter 3, verse 7. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous even as he god is righteous okay so my study on this really focused on that word righteousness and as i studied it i found that nephi prophet nephi this was one of his major themes, and, and Jacob continued it even after Nephi's death. So there were some things 
that he taught that help us to understand how righteousness comes about. But also I wanted to, in talking about faith being the foundation of righteousness, I wanted to talk about specifically the some of the prophecies that Nephi mentions that pertain to us in our day. So first of all, uh, 2 Nephi 2, verse 13. And if ye shall say there is no law, ye shall also say there is no sin. If ye shall say there is no sin, ye shall also say there is no righteousness. And if there be no righteousness, there be no happiness. And if there be no righteousness nor happiness, there be no punishment nor misery. And if these things are not, there is no God. Okay, so this this little uh, verse here is teaching us that if we were to take out any one of these little principles or truths or doctrines, all of all of God would basically collapse. There would be no God. Um, righteousness is essential to there being a God. And the way that righteousness comes about is through our faith. So let's talk about some of these prophecies. Uh, first of all, the prophecy in 1 Nephi 14, 14. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, beheld the power of the Lamb of God, that it descended upon the saints of the church of the Lamb and upon the covenant people of the Lord. Who were scattered upon all the face of the earth. And they were armed with righteousness. And with the power of God in great glory. The reason I'm getting emotional about this is because what is it that that righteousness lead, you know, stems from? It stems from our faith. The prophecy of Nephi makes here, President Nelson says that we are those people that Nephi saw. And so we have to ask ourselves, did President Nelson teach anything in this last conference that would help to arm us with righteousness or with the power of God? And the answer is yes, he did. He taught us about faith. And so, brothers and sisters, this prophecy teaches us that because these saints of the Church of the Lamb acted in faith on revealed truth, they reaped the rewards of righteousness and the power of God in great glory. I hope you can feel and know that the Lord and Nephi here is talking about you. He's talking about where we're at right now. Our prophet has asked us to increase our faith, to do things that will require faith. And I think in that invitation, he's also asked us to be armed with righteousness so that we can fulfill the mission uh, that the Savior has for, for us and for this world. Okay, prophecy number two, 1 Nephi 19.11. For thus spake the prophet, the Lord God surely shall visit all the house of Israel at that day, some with his voice because of their righteousness unto their great joy and salvation. So we know that we are the house of Israel. We know that the day that this prophecy relates to is our day. This is the gathering. This is when the Lord God will visit us. And he visits us first through his voice. And why does he visit us? It's because of our righteousness. And if it's because of our righteousness, then it has to also come about because of the faith that we've exercised. Scripture number three, First Nephi twenty-two twenty-six, 26. And because of the righteousness of his people, Satan has no power. So here we learn that the connection between our faith, righteousness, and Satan having power. As we exercise faith, we increase in righteousness. And thereby, 
binding Satan, uh, giving Satan no power. And as uh, I believe it was, uh, I can't believe if it was uh, Elder Romney uh, that said that basically when Satan is bound in an individual home, the millennium has already begun in that home. And so uh, we can be, uh, and our homes can really be those centers of faith and righteousness where Satan has no power over us or our family. All right. Well, that was question three. Does anybody have any questions or thoughts on that? I Matt's posting some really good scriptures in here. Um, I'd just like to add my second witness to, to what Blake said there about um, – First Nephi fourteen fourteen, and that being that being today, um, I know that um, President Nelson said that you will live to see that this is this is this day, and I I I too know that that we're living in that day, and this is the day that we need to exercise faith in the Lord and get ourselves right with Him. I like how it says his people. This is um, part of that uh, subjecting ourselves to, to the Lord. We need we need to uh, make ourselves the Lord's people. Um, and uh, and what did Joseph Smith say? Joseph Smith said that um, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now think about that for a, a second here. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So we have the, the, the contrast there between the brother of Jared, have, having the faith as the brother of Jared and, and not having faith like the brother of Jared, making figurative, making spiritualized and, um, and weakening things. That's the two ends of the equation. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. The other end of that equation is, is that when we exercise faith as a brother of Jared, it becomes impossible for God to withhold himself from us. That's what happened with the story of the brother of Jared. It became impossible for the Lord to withhold himself from the brother of Jared anymore. So those are the two ends of the spectrum that we're dealing with. You, you, you don't exercise faith. It is impossible for you to please God. It, it doesn't matter what you think you're doing. You're not pleasing God. But on the other end of the spectrum, if you act with perfect faith, then you will it'll be impossible for the Lord to keep himself from you and in and, and, and his totality. So a very, very powerful understanding of two ends of, of a spectrum. And like, once again, bearing my testimony, what Blake just said, this is the day, first Nephi nineteen eleven, that the Lord God shall surely visit all the house of Israel. And so uh, just hopefully tying that all together and bearing my, my, my second witness that, that that is absolutely the day we're in and, and where we're headed. All right, are we ready for question number four? These are such solid doctrines. Okay, so we'll go to question four. So question number four, what arrangement should be followed in presenting the subject of faith? What does the lecture on faith uh, teach us? It says, in presenting the subject of faith, we shall observe the following order. First, faith itself. What is it? So the fir first thing is defining it. Secondly, the object on which it rests. And thirdly, the effects which flow from it. So Joseph Smith then just a answers and s those three things and says, okay, what do we need to do? First, we, we should show what faith is. Secondly, the object upon which it rests. And thirdly, the effects which flow from it. And um, it's kind of more of a synopsis thing here. I, I, I didn't think that... Uh, Was there anything you wanted to add to that one, Blake? 
No, I, I'm going to go through, I'm going to use the same pattern as I answer the next uh, question, question five, um, just to kind of flush everything out. So this... yeah, there was nothing, as I was studying this, there was nothing I could like have added to this or, you know, tied in. This is, um, this pattern here, this first, second, third, is exactly how I study scriptures from now on. And it's exactly what Blake said at the, at the very, very beginning of, of this paper here, where he said here, notice the way in, in which the lectures are presented. Truth is revealed or presented. Questions are asked. Questions are answered with the scriptures, i.e. the words of God, are then given to support the statements of truth uh, given that or presented. Well, go down here and let's take a look at what he says here. Um, one more time, he says, the first thing that we need to do is show what faith is. So when you want to know what a top, when you want to study a topic like faith, any topic, faith, repentance, baptism, um, having your calling and election made sure this is, th this is the exact pattern that we, we, you need to follow with everything. We first need to understand what it is. We have to define what it is we're talking about. If there is no definitions, if there's no set definitions, we can't have a communication. We can't have a dialogue, right? If, if the languages, if the languages get, you know, uh, confounded at the Tower of Babel, everything falls apart. We have to have an understanding of what we're talking about. So that's the first thing. The second thing is the object upon which it rests. So how does it work? So okay, that's what it is. How does it work, right? What's the application of it? What does that mean right now in my life? What do I need to do to make that happen? And then thirdly, the last thing, the effects which flow from it are what? The blessings. And that's an important thing, that we, the, the consequence, right? So it's both good and bad. The effects, so the consequences that flow from it. If you do this, you get blank. If you don't do it, you get blank, right? This is the way that we can study our scriptures uh, for anything, for anything. First, show what the thing is. Secondly, how it works. Thirdly, the consequences or effects which flow from the use of it. And, and that uh, is a little gem that, you know, I hope, like Blake says at the beginning, I hope that people will start to study more like this. My first lectures on faith studying my mission, I came across these three things and I, it just blew my mind to, this is how I need to study everything in my entire life. And as I'm answering these questions, I need to, uh, I need to get the answers. Like when I'm looking for what these things are and what they rest and what the effects are, what flow from them, all of them need to be able to be answered by the word of God, because that's what doesn't change. And so it's a, it's a, I would say it's like a, um, blueprint or baseline for how we should be studying the doctrine. And I think it does a very good job of that. So, um, um, I don't think there's any questions on that. So we're going to go on then to question number five. And question number five is, what is faith? So there's our first, uh, first step. And in the lectures on faith, it says, Agreeably to this order, we have to first show what faith is. The author of the epistle to the Hebrews in the 11th chapter of that epistle and first verse gives the following definition of the word faith. Now faith is the substance or assurance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. From this we learn that faith is the assurance of which men have of the existence of things which they have not seen. And the principle of action in all intelligent beings. And then Joseph uh, answers this question. It is the assurance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11.1, 1, that is, it is the assurance we have of the existence of unseen things. And being the assurance which we have of the existence of unseen things must be the principle of action in all intelligent beings. Hebrews 11.3, through faith we understand the words were framed 
the worlds were framed by the word of God. So, faith has, for me in my life, has always, it's always been a concept that I've, I've kind of, I've understood the periphery of it, right? I, I understood it enough to be able to, to, to make it operate in my life, uh, to gain a testimony. But I've always felt as if there's something more that I didn't understand about, about what it was and about how it actually works or how it actually operates. And I mean, honestly, this is something ever since I was a teenager that I've always wondered about, thought about, I studied it. I've never really come to an answer until now. And so as I present these things about, first of all, what faith is, um, I, I think a lot of you will already have had some of this understanding, but this is a, this is a process that you have to really think through how it works uh, to be able to understand it. So first quote I want to give you is from the King Follett Discourse by the Prophet Joseph Smith. He said, All things whatsoever God in his infinite wisdom has seen fit and proper to reveal to us, while we are dwelling in mortality, in regard to our mortal bodies, are revealed to us in the abstract and independent of affinity of this mortal tabernacle, but are revealed to our spirits precisely as though we had no bodies at all. Okay, so the way that, that truth is revealed to us is to our spirits, as if we had no body at all, okay? DNC 9331, behold, here is the agency of man, and here is the condemnation of man, because that which was from the beginning, and there I hope you would insert the word truth, is plainly manifest unto them, and they receive not the light, okay? So faith, first of all, is choosing to receive the light of truth, or as we'll learn from other scriptures, intelligence, as that truth acts and manifests itself in the universe. Uh, Joseph Smith and the teachings of Prophet Joseph Smith summarized a little bit of how this how this will will actually manifest in our lives. He says, when you feel pure intelligence flowing into you, it may give you sudden strokes of ideas, so that by noticing it, you may find it fulfilled the same day or soon, i.e., those things that were presented unto your minds by the Spirit of God will come to pass. And thus, by learning the Spirit of God, and understanding it, you may grow into the principle of revelation until you become perfect in Christ Jesus. Okay, so, so the first thing to understand here is this intelligence or the light of truth will flow into us. It will flow into our spirits, and it, that's how it's manifest to us. And we will notice that it is flowing into us because we will have sudden strokes of ideas, okay? These thoughts, these things in our mind, and those things will literally be fulfilled. They will literally come to pass. Okay, so that's the first. The second key to understanding faith really has to do with the, the second uh, part of how we prove what faith is. And that is that God the Father and Jesus Christ are the objects upon which faith must rest. Okay, so in DNC 9329, this is where we learn that intelligence is the light of truth. We also learn that it was not created or made. Intelligence is co-eternal with God. Now, God the Father has already developed his ability to be able to receive and to gather intelligence according to the principle of faith. 
And he does this in such a way that he literally is the light. And he literally is the truth. Now, the same thing applies to Jesus Christ. And that's why we read in John 14, 6, that he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he also says in 3 Nephi 11, 11, I am the light. Now, we understand a little bit more of how Jesus obtained this. And by learning about this, we can then learn how we too can do the same thing. So in DNC 93, 12 through 14, and I, John, saw that he received not of the fullness at the first. And he's talking here about Jesus. But he received grace for grace. And he received not of the fullness at first, but continued from grace to grace until he received a fullness. And thus he was called the Son of God because he received not of the fullness at the first. Okay, so I'm not going to go over this, but I would, I would ask you to ask yourselves, what is the fullness that's being referenced here? It, you know, what is the fullness that, that Christ had to receive grace for grace? What is it that he had to, to continue from grace to grace to obtain? Okay, so when we're, sit, when we're ask, asking about faith, uh, I think a lot of people just think faith is belief. Well, no, faith is, is it's way more than belief. Um, faith should be a, uh, something that leads us to certain knowledge. Okay, so some other scriptures to talk about to, to kind of flesh out this idea of God the Father and Jesus Christ being the objects uh, of, upon which faith must rest. Um, later in the lectures on faith, in another lecture, we learn that God is a God of truth, and that as he speaks, so it is. Um, Isaiah 55, 11, So shall my word be, that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Ezekiel 12, 25. For I am the Lord, I will speak, and the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. Okay, the third thing we need to understand Truth, light, or spirit is the medium or the vehicle through which Jesus Christ operates. It's, it's the medium through which the entire Godhead operates. Truth, light, and spirit have agency to act for itself, and it is not controlled by anything else because it emanates from God the Father and Jesus Christ. It acts upon us, but only if we choose to allow it to do so by receiving it. Some scriptures to support this. DNC 9330, all truth is independent in that sphere in which God has placed it to act for itself as all intelligence also. DNC 88, 6 through 13, he that ascended up on high as also he descended below all things, in that he comprehended all things, that he might be in, in all and through all things, the light of truth, which truth shineth. This is the light of Christ, as also he is in the sun and the light of the sun, and the power thereof by which it was made, as also he is in the moon and is the light of the moon and the power thereof by which it was made is also the light of the stars and the power thereof by which they were made, and the earth also, and the power thereof, even the earth upon which you stand, and the light which shineth, which giveth you light, is through him who enlighteneth your eyes, which is the same light that quickeneth your understandings, which light proceedeth forth from the presence of God to fill the immensity of space. 
the light which is in all things, which giveth life to all things, which is the law by which all things are governed, even the power of God who sitteth upon his throne, who is in the bosom of eternity, who is in the midst of all things. As we ponder these particular scriptures, it will also enlighten us to understand how the Holy Ghost operates and how, you know, in a, in a meeting, everybody can be feeling the Spirit, everybody can be receiving the Spirit at the same time. Okay. The fourth thing. Hey, what, what are the effects can, of faith? What Can I okay. say one so thing? So as Micah said, yeah, go ahead. One thing before you continue, because something came up in the Discord yeah. And that was answered, I believe, in what you just went over here. And uh, there, it's with a one scripture that you 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 were script, uh, you quoted there, but you didn't actually quote the the scripture in that mix. And that is when the Savior said, "There is a truth uh, with all things in the universe, and that is that where there are two intelligences, one will be greater, and I am greater than all." And um, that's another one of uh, those you, yeah, it's Abraham three. Yep. That, that's another one of those ones that, that we have to understand when, when we keep saying that, that we're going to be um, equal, like that, that there's, there's this great kind of leveling off field where just everyone will be identical and that that's never promised. And in fact, with the law of e eternal increase, we learned that, we will never be greater than the Father, right? That, that, that will never happen, right? We will never be greater than, um, uh, than Jesus, for he will, they will always have more kids, right? More intelligence. They will always have more than us. And, and so there's always that, that grace, which he, he also read, the grace for grace. There's, all, there's that layer of grace for grace that, that occurs with everything. It, with, with um, as the, as Jesus said, Lord or uh, Father, let them be one in me as I am one in Thee. There's that that relationship of grace for grace, and so um, and so I, I I there was a a kind of question or thought process that went around that that would answer, right? That there isn't there isn't going to be this great leveling off uh, a, a process. That, that occurs where everyone's just identical and we're all just robots and we're all just, I mean, just we all look the same and we all act exactly the same. Um, you know, it, that's not the way it is. Like, the, what, uh, is it Reba or Reba? <laughs> Sister Cook, what she just said there is spot on. It doesn't matter how long it's been, one eternity, two eternities, it doesn't matter. The Savior will always be our Savior. That That's never going to change. He will always be that for us. Like um, Elder Neil A. Maxwell said, we're not going to need an excuse when we walk by by our Savior to start singing praises to him. Like it's, there's not going to be a, a, a need, you know, it's just going to happen because forever and ever and ever, he is going to be that for us. And, and the father will be our father. And, and so that relationship does not change forever. And I, and I think that sometimes we, we think that it, it's going to, we think that that relationship is going to change and, and, and we're going to be talking, you know, um, I don't, I don't even know how to, how to describe it, but it's like this weird kind of homogenous mass where we're all just identical, and uh, it, it sounds more spooky to me than heavenly, but some people actually have that that thought process, and that's just um, that's just not gonna that's just not gonna be the case based off of what we learned with with those scriptures. And I'll pass pass it back over to Blake. Okay, so as Micah said, what are the effects of faith? What are the blessings of faith? And I, I mean, there's too many to name, um, 
but we could go through and we could list all of them. Th these were just a few that I chose to, to highlight. Um, DNC 93, 27 through 28. And no man receiveth a fullness unless he keepeth his commandments. He that keepeth his commandments receiveth truth and light until he is glorified in truth and knoweth all things. DNC 88, 66 through 67. Behold, that which you hear is as a voice of one crying in the wilderness. In the wilderness, because you cannot see him. My voice, because my voice is spirit. My spirit is truth. Truth abideth and hath no end. And if it be in you, it shall abound. And if your eye be single to my glory, your whole bodies shall be filled with light. And there shall be no darkness in you. And that body which is filled with light comprehendeth all things. Helaman chapter 12, verses 9 through 21. Yea, behold, at his voice do the hills and the mountains tremble and quake. And by the power of his voice they are broken up and become smooth. Yea, even like unto a valley. Yea, by the power of his voice doth the whole earth shake. Yea, by the power of his voice do the foundations rock even to the very center. Yea, and if he say unto the earth, move, it is moved. Yea, if he say unto the earth, thou shalt go back, that it lengthen out the day for many hours, it is done. And thus, according to his word, the earth goeth back, and it appeareth unto man that the sun standeth still. Yea, and behold, this is so, for surely it is the earth that moveth and not the sun. And behold also, if he say unto the waters of the great deep, be thou dried up, it is done. Behold, if he say unto this mountain, Be thou raised up, and come over, and fall upon that city, that it be buried up, behold, it is done. And behold, if a man hide up a treasure in the earth, and the Lord shall say, Let it be accursed, because of the iniquity of him who hath hid it up, behold, it shall be accursed. And if the Lord shall say, Be thou accursed, that no man shall find thee from this time henceforth and forever, Behold, no man getteth it henceforth and forever. And behold, if the Lord shall say unto a man, Because of thine iniquities thou shalt be accursed forever, it shall be done. And if the Lord shall say, Because of thine iniquities thou shalt be cut off from my presence, he will cause that it shall be so. Okay, so to, to really summarize it and to give you a uh, Elder Bednar type definition for faith that you can go to. This is this is how I would define faith. Faith is the proper use of agency to confirm, verify, or prove what previously was unknown, undone, or unseen to you. Faith is choosing to receive and act upon the light of truth or the spirit of Jesus Christ as it is manifest to our spirits. I thought you were still going there. That was good. I should have... It's not, not written here. I'm like trying to take notes here, Blake. I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. Um. All right, so I, I figured out that it was Reba, so I'm not hopefully going to pronounce that wrong again tonight. Um, any questions on that? What is faith? Such an important thing. Any questions on that? We definitely need to to to, to exercise that understanding of, of faith more. All right. Well, we'll move on to the last question. This is the last question that we're going to be and going. I, oh. Yeah. I'll just say one thing. You just, you just, you said a word that, that I think really highlights faith, right? You said exercise. What is exercise? Exercise is moving. Exercise is doing, right? You know, you don't burn calories 
by by not doing right um and so there there needs to be this this use of agency there needs to be movement there needs to be action and so when there's a lack of that there's a lack of faith and you know i i see that the, the problems that are in the church right now with so many people that are stepping away from the church that say they have lost their faith or lost their testimony and i think um you know could it could this be solved by by introducing um you know truth more or should we really take to heart what president nelson said that we are lazy learners and lax disciples lazy and lax connotes the fact that we're not exercising we're not doing right and so you know for those there may be many reasons people that leave the church or or lose faith or lose their testimony i should say but i think it all goes back to that to that decision that to act Yeah, um, Danae just said, Hiram Andrus called, said, our works are a barometer of our faith. And going back to what you said about President Nelson saying that, that we're, we're lazy or lax learners, it's very, it, it, it's very reminiscent. It goes right back to Alma 32 and most members' understanding of faith because most members – you know, when they think faith, they think of Alma 32 because A, it's in the Book of Mormon, and so we like those, and B, they haven't read the lectures on faith. But it, it, it's the same concept. You know, you you plant the seed in the ground, you give it some water, you get you make sure it's taken care of, and then you neglect it, right? You 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 don't give it the care and need that it 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 it, it needs. Actions, exercising. And the seed dies, not because the seed wasn't good, not because the plant wasn't good, but because we were lazy in our upkeep of it. We weren't acting. There was no exercising of it, so the plant died. And so it, it, what President Nelson is saying that if you're struggling with this, if your plant's dying, it, it's because you're, you're lazy, right? It's There's nothing wrong with the seed. There's nothing wrong with the plant that'll grow. You just need to get out there and, and water it. You just need to get out there and weed around it. You just need to take care of it and and start exercising faith. And, and, and then that, that seed will grow and grow and grow, just like the mustard seed growing into that big tree. And then, then the next step is that angels will come lodge in the branches of it. So that the next concept is, is that once you've then established your tree firmly enough then you can go off and be saviors on mount sinai you, or, uh, you can you can be saviors on the mount you you can you can then go off and help other people right because you can't lift people to a higher standard that than what you're living so it, it's all connected to the exact same thing and so you can't blame the seed right you can't blame the seed you can't blame the plant if if you're neglecting it and so we have to we have to we have to exercise so so yeah, and one of those ways angie that we do exercise it is hold to the rod that is exactly what we do and the more we do that the more we can then rend that veil of unbelief which was also a a, a, a really good fireside so all right so let's go on to the last question here this is the last question that we're gonna be going over in lecture on faith number one and that is this how do you prove that faith is the principle of action in all intelligent beings okay let's read the lectures on faith it says if men were duly to consider themselves and turn their thoughts and reflections to the operations of their own minds they would readily discover that it is faith and faith only which is the moving cause of all action in them that without it both mind and body would be in a state of inactivity and all their exertions would cease both physical and mental now that's just mind-blowing if you think about it. were this class to go back and reflect upon the history of their lives 
from the period of their first recollections and ask themselves what principle excited them to action or what gave them energy and activity in all their lawful um, avocations, callings, and pursuits, what would be the answer? Would it not be that it was the assurance which we had of the existence of things which we had not seen as yet? Was it not the hope which you had in consequence of your belief in the existence of unseen things, which stimulated you to action and exertion in order to obtain them? Are you not dependent on your faith or belief for the acquisition of all knowledge, wisdom, and intelligence? Would you exert yourselves to obtain wisdom and intelligence unless you did believe that you could obtain them? Would you have ever sown if you had not believed that ye would reap? Would you have ever planted if you had not believed that you would gather? Would you have ever asked unless you had believed that you would receive? Would you have ever sought unless you had believed that you would have found? Or would you have ever knocked unless you had believed that it would have been opened unto you? In a word, is there anything that you would have done, either physical or mental, if you had not previously believed? Are not all of your exertions of every kind dependent on on your faith or may we not ask what have you or what do you possess which you have not obtained by reason of your faith your food your raiment your lodgings are they not all by reason of your faith reflect and ask yourself if these things are not so turn your thoughts on your own minds and see if faith is not the moving cause of all action in yourselves, and if the moving cause in you, is it not in all other intelligent beings? That's the end quote from Lectures on Faith. I would just say before I read Joseph Smith's here, this is exactly why we need to have a faith grounded in things that cause us to, to act. If you're believing in things that don't cause you to act, you're just sitting waiting for something to be dropped on your lap, according to Joseph Smith, is that faith. Okay, let's go to his answer here. He says, first, by duly considering the operations of our own mind, and secondly, by the direct declaration of Scripture, found in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7, by faith, Noah being warned of things not seen as yet, moved with fear prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world. Fascinating wording there. And became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. Hebrews 11, 8, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out not knowing whither he went. Hebrews 11.9, by faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Hebrews 11.27, by faith Moses forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. So now we're hearing, it's, we're seeing the contrast between um, uh, fearing man or fearing God. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. And that is, is that it. That is the answer. Yep. Yeah. So as I went through this to think of the answer, um, first of all, I thought, how do we prove these things. Second of all, I thought um, about the principle of action. And then third, third, my mind was drawn to this idea of uh, 
this being a principle of action in intelligent beings. And what does it mean to be an intelligent being? I think that's kind of where we need to start out at. Um, so a few quotes from Joseph Smith. The mind or the intelligence which man possesses is co-equal or co-eternal with God himself. I want to reason more on the spirit of man, for I am dwelling on the body and spirit of man, on the subject of the dead. I take my ring from my finger and like it un liken it unto the mind of man, the immortal part, because it had no beginning. Suppose you cut it in two, then it has a beginning and an end. But join it again, and it continues one eternal round. So with the spirit of man. As the Lord liveth, if it had a beginning, it will have an end. All the fools and learned and wise men from the beginning of creation who say that the spirit of man had a beginning prove that it must have an end. And if that doctrine is true, then the doctrine of annihilation would be true. But if I am right, I might with boldness proclaim from the housetops that God never had the power to create the spirit of man at all. God himself could not create himself. And further on in the King Paul Discourse, he says, intelligence is eternal and exists upon a self-existent principle. It is a spirit from age to age, and there is no creation about it. All the minds and spirits that God ever sent into the world are susceptible of enlargement. Okay, so, and it, you know, we all possess this intelligence or this mind, right? And this is this is a thing that exists, you know, it's co-eternal with God, basically. So God did not create this himself. Um, and because there is no beginning and there is no end, we've, you know, we've always existed in some form or another, and we will always exist. Now, how do we talk about, in, you know, intelligent beings? Um, and where in the scriptures does it say that intelligence beings um, exercise faith, and that's a principle of action. Well, I don't know if you've noticed this yet or not, but I haven't used a single scripture from the Bible, because Joseph used all the scriptures from the Bible to prove his point. So that's why I'm using the Book of Mormon, that's why I'm using Doctrine and Covenants. Okay, so let's go to the scriptures, 2 Nephi 2, 13-14. And if these things are not, there is no God. And if there is no God, we are not, neither the earth. For there could have been no creation of things, neither to act nor to be acted upon. Wherefore, all things must have vanished away. And now, my sons, I speak unto you these things for your profit and learning. For there is a God, and he hath created all things, both the heavens and the earth, and all things that in them are, both things to act and things to be acted upon. So as intelligent beings, we are those things that act, and we should not be something that is just acted upon. Alma 13, 3 through 4. And this is the manner after which they were ordained, being called and prepared from the foundation of the world, according to the foreknowledge of God, on account of their exceeding faith and good works. In the first place, being left to choose good or evil, Therefore, they having chosen good and exercising exceedingly great faith are called with a holy calling, yea, with that holy calling which was prepared with and according to a preparatory redemption for such. And thus they have been called to this holy calling on account of their faith, while others would reject the Spirit of God on account of the hardness of their hearts and blindness of their minds. While, if it had not been for this, they might have had as great privilege as their brethren. Okay, so this, this principle of, of acting and, and exercising faith, this was something that we exercised even in the pre-mortal life. That's what Alma 13 is talking about here. That some were called and ordained from the foundation of the world because of their faith, and because that faith led to them doing good works. We were all on that same standing, right? But one intelligence rose above another as some intelligences chose to exercise faith. 
and some exercise faith to a greater degree. So where in the scriptures, um, what examples can we look to really to see this, this principle of action? Where can we look in the scriptures to see faith actually at work? There's three that I choose uh, to highlight here. The first is Joseph Smith. When Joseph read James 1.5, he read, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and it braideth not, and it shall be given him. And in his own history, Joseph Smith writes, At length, I came to the conclusion that I must either remain in darkness and confusion, or else I must do as James directs, that is, ask of God. I at length came to the determination to ask of God, concluding that if he gave wisdom to them that lacked wisdom, and we could liberally, liberally and not upbraid, I might venture. So in accordance with this, my determination to ask of God, I retired to the woods to make the attempt. And we obviously know the effects of Joseph's faith. Second example is the brother of Jared, and this is something that... Um, if you haven't had an opportunity to uh, listen to Micah's paper on faith as a brother of Jared, uh, he, he goes over this. Um, this is Ether 2.25 and Ether 3.1. Therefore, what will ye that I should prepare for you, that ye may have light when ye are swallowed up in the depths of the sea? Some say that perhaps there's a missing verse here because we don't, we don't know how the brother of Jared respond, um, um, came to this conclusion. But then we see what he did. And it came to pass that the brother of Jared went forth unto the mount, which they called the Mount Shelem, because of its exceeding height, and did molten out of a rock 16 small stones. And they were white and clear, even as transparent glass. And he did carry them in his hands upon the top of the mount and cried again unto the Lord. And again, we know what the effects of the faith of the brother of Jared was. Uh, the last example from the Book of Mormon is Alma and the sons of Mosiah. This is Mosiah 27, 25 through 26, and Mosiah 28, verses 1, 3, and 4. And the Lord said unto me, and this is uh, Alma the Younger speaking, Marvel not that all mankind, yea, men and women, all nations, kindreds, tongues, and people must be born again, yea, born of God, changed from their carnal and fallen state to a state of righteousness, being redeemed of God, becoming his sons and daughters. And thus they become new creatures, and unless they do this, they can in no wise inherit the kingdom of God. Now it came to pass that after the sons of Mosiah had done all these things, they took a small number with them, and returned to their father, the king, and desired of him that he would grant unto them that they might, with these whom they had selected, go up to the land of Nephi, that they might preach the things which they had heard, and that they might impart the word of God to their brethren, the Lamanites. Now they were desirous that salvation should be declared to every creature, for they could not bear that any human soul should perish. Yea, even the very thoughts that any soul should endure endless torment did cause them to quake and tremble. And thus did the Spirit of the Lord work upon them, for they were the very vilest of sinners. And we know the effects of Alma and the sons of Mosiah and their faith. We know that they converted thousands of Lamanites, that they helped thousands of Lamanites to be born of God, just as they had been born of God as well. So, brothers and sisters, um, I testify that faith is a principle of action. Faith requires us to act upon light, truth, or spirit as it's given to us. And has been pointed out in the, in the chat already, when we do not act upon truth, then that is not faith. Faith must be centered upon truth the light of truth, Jesus Christ, in order to reap, um, reap tr uh, the, the effects of faith. 
and reap benefits from faith. Um, I know that this ability to receive truth happens in our minds and our thoughts. And as we reflect upon how our minds operate, then we can more clearly see how that light and truth influences us and then how our faith actually operates. And so I would um, invite all of you, understand yourselves better and understand faith better by coming to understand how your mind operates. Uh, take time to be holy, take time to be still. And then as we are promised in the scriptures, we will know that he is God. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. And I didn't mention that uh, at the beginning. I wanted to save it for the end because I wanted to also thank Blake's wife for allowing him to, to, to do this fireside on Mother's Day. So that was a double double thank you for the Blake uh, wife and uh, family over there. So thank you for that. Um, and thank you for everyone for, for showing up. I just will just add my second witness to what Blake bore's testimony there at the end. And that is that faith is is what built us before we even came to this earth. It was exercised before we even came to this earth, and it is the what is the driving influence of us in this life. And that we have to understand things on a doctrinal level. We have to understand what something means. We have to understand it, understand how it works, and then understand the effects of it so that we can uh, make wise decisions and I know as we do that as we exercise faith in the Lord and in the word of God that we won't be tossed to and fro by every whim of man and the philosophies and, and opines of men and we won't be confused in this world because I know that this is a good seed I know that this is a good seed and I I love that seed. And when my life, uh, you know, when the storm bellows in your life, when, when if you have put the appropriate time into that tree, it it, it allows you to it, look at it and say, at least I have this. I, I, I know this is true. And, and this gives me so much hope for the future and enables me to then go off and exercise faith in the Lord that that his promises that he's made to me are going to be fulfilled. And if we don't have that that same level of understanding and thus that same level of, of exercising of faith, um, we won't progress to the state that we were supposed to progress to in this life. And I would also add another a testimony that I know that you all can do this. I know everyone within the sound of my voice can do this. That that our choices in the pre-earth life landed us where we are today, but that is no guarantee to where we're going to end up after this life. That it doesn't matter where you started in this life. If you started in or the church, you started out in the church. You started in the church and went out of the church, but now you're back in the church. Or if maybe you're out of the church and you're looking in on the church, anybody within the sound of my voice, I know that you have the power to to exercise faith in the Savior to get grace upon grace and make yourself clean in the blood of the Lamb. I know that you can do that. I know you can do that. And I am so grateful for Joseph Smith, the prophet, for restoring this this truth for us today. I am grateful for being born in the, in, in the gospel, and I'm grateful for uh, being given one of the gifts of the the spirit to be able to believe in the words of Christ, because I I I know where my life would be like if I wasn't raised in this and I didn't know these things to be true. I know where I would be, and uh, I have examples in my life. I have siblings and uh, relatives. I know exactly where I would be in my life, and and I I just look at it and shudder and just go thank God. That that I was uh, that I was given what I was given, and I acted in faith in the right directions. And I know that you can too. And um, I share that with you, and I commit you all to get a deeper understanding of faith, 
and to exercise and to act on that faith. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. And Amen. And uh, we'll say a closing prayer, and then we'll uh, get into uh, your questions, if there are any. Father, we come before thee as thy children and um, as members of thy church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We thank thee, Father, for the truth that thou hast revealed to us, both in Scripture, um, through the prophet Joseph Smith, and through our modern prophet. We're grateful to be able to see um, how faith operates and to see that it is a principle of action that requires much of us. We pray, Father, that thou would continue to help our minds to recognize truth that is, as it is revealed to us, that we'll be able to distinguish it clearly from the philosophies of men and and the things that Satan is trying to put forward as truth. We pray for all of those that are uh, struggling at this time to, to understand faith and to understand how to receive thy truth. We pray, Father, that um, thou will guide and direct each of us in our lives to more fully understand the principle of faith and more fully uh, be able to see the effects of faith in our life. We pray, Father, that whatever mountains may be in our lives that need moved, that thou will reveal the truth to us of how to move that mountain, and that we will continue to grow and increase in faith until we can behold thy face and stand in thy presence. And we pray for these things, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I just keep thinking of things that I forgot to mention. So I, I, I forgot to mention the, the Mother's Day, but I, I really wanted to, to thank Blake's family for this because I, I know it's a sacrifice and uh, uh, to, 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 to do these. And so we're grateful for her um, allowing that to happen. But I just thought of something else that I forgot to say, and that was to thank um, you for um, – putting out uh, paper and sharing your work with me. Um, and I, you know, I, uh, Kim, um, just put out a video that was fantastic. And I, I, I loved listening to it. And, um, um, uh, I don't even know how to say it. Roquin, um, has been putting out some, uh, some papers that they've been putting together as, um, silver, uh, put together a paper on temporal preparedness, um, and shared that in the discord. And, and, I, I know that sometimes you can kind of give little hearts or little thumbs up in the Discord, but I wanted to actually say it vocally. I am really grateful for 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 you taking the time to share this because th those are exactly what we're talking about today. Those are those are you going through those same processes. What is this? How do I define it? You know, and then we work into uh, how does it how does it work, and how do I back this up in the scriptures? And then what are the, the consequences of them? And, and so the, the way you're going about finding these answers is, is exactly right. And I just love listening to it. And, and you get these wonderful nuggets of, of, of new thoughts and, and new uh, takes on scriptures that are just really good. And sometimes there's scriptures that are like, I wouldn't have remembered. Like, um, I'm trying to remember, but maybe it was Kim again. <laughs> that brought up a Helaman scripture in Discord. And I thought, wow, that is a really good scripture. And, I, you know, it should be a scripture master. I should have that one memorized. And so uh, it, it's it, it's really stretching me. So I want to thank you all for, for, for helping me with that. You, um, you, you, you've blessed my life when you share those things and, um, the, and you, those thoughts in your testimonies. So... Um, thank you all for that. And so if you want to go to that that Discord, send uh, uh, Blake a email um, down below uh, in the description box. His e The email's there, and then, then he can shoot you an invite. Blake has um, um, uh, runs it, and he has a, a list of rules, and he also, has, uh, you know, um, repeated the, the his admonition that the hope of it is that we can keep it focused on the scriptures 
and keep it focused on doctrine and um maybe Blake would be better to explain that but but uh, to, to to the 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 vision of what we're trying to 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 uh, the, to accomplish with this and how it ties into the lectures on faith Yeah. Um, first of all, I do want to say, like, even though, like, I I created the Discord, like, I, I started the account and everything, it, it's not my Discord um, channel. Like, I've had a the Defending Zion channel before. It's it's also it's not Micah's channel. Um, it is really a laboratory for all of us to share in. Um, all of us have insights and understanding that we. Uh, that would really help to increase the faith of, of others and help us to, to understand truth better. And so I hope we'll think of Discord as, as that kind of a forum where we can share truth, we can focus on the scriptures, um, and we can understand things maybe at a, a little deeper level than we're used to. Um, we've uh, In the Discord, it's broken down according to topics, so we try to keep the topics in each channel focused on that topic, right? And um, like Mike I said, I'll just add my witness too that there are some some really profound things that have been shared in there uh, that I think uh, benefit us as saints right here and now where we're at in the last days. So um, I know also that there's, uh, you know, the, when people express themselves, there's a lot of uh, potential for people to misunderstand or to uh, perhaps be offended or or to, to not really like the way something is said. And I see that as a great opportunity for us, all of us, to really understand how to become a Zion people, how to become of one heart and one mind. Um, and, you know, I, I know there's things in there that have been said that I disagree with, and and yet that's a learning experience for me as well to be able to to be able to think through these things to examine the scriptures more deeply and then to come to my own understanding of it um, but all of this can't happen without you um, so for those of you that are already part of it i invite you you know share the things that are close to your heart share the things that you have come to learn use scripture to back it up and help us all increase in, in learning and help us draw closer to the Lord. Yeah. And some of those things are uh, that provided are just like really, really, really good. <laughs> just really good. Um, Blake just mentioned one from, um, um, in the gifts of the spirit channel where, you, where they went over those things really good really good and uh the other thing is is that you're gonna you're going to see you're going to start to see concerts concerts of clarity with things or you're going to start to see that people don't have a leg to stand on that's what you're going to start to see so the, when 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 micah comes out and he quotes a even just quoting an apostle right and, and says okay the new jerusalem is or brigham young new jerusalem's going to be in uh over here and then the the old jerusalem's going to be there and then we're going to have the you know the great and dreadful day that doesn't that doesn't mean anything even that on its own when we get to those concerts of clarity and when when people start going okay if that's true let me just keep reading and keep reading and keep reading um is uh it is brought back over and over and over again that concert of clarity and people are finding quotes and they go geez look at this uh, here's somebody that was quoting and, and talked about um, the, the new Jerusalem being built, the 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 Savior appearing in old Jerusalem, and then the great and dreadful day, and then the millennium beginning. And um, and it's like you're going to start to see concerts of clarity, concerts of clarity. It's not just a quote. There, there, there isn't just a quote from somebody. You're going to see something happening over and over and over again. And what you get is, which is fun in a, a more discord uh, that's centered on scripture. Like that's what we're trying to do is that you'll go to a, a, a chat like Joseph Smith returning or something. And somebody will say, Hey, here's another, um, 
here's another quote that has to deal with this. And you go, oh my gosh, I never heard that one. Or here's another quote that deals with uh, um, recognizing spirits or something. Or here's another quote that that deals with um, uh, th these doctrines. And you can go, wow, I'm starting to sense a, a concert of clarity. And then, like... <laughs> Like Blake said, there might be somebody or something that says, well, I, I thought that this was the way it was. I thought this was the way it was. And what you're going to find is that there is no concert of clarity with that, right? So that's that's the contrast that hopefully we can see and, and we can arrive at stuff. And and, and like I, I said earlier in this, if we're going down the same road, it doesn't matter what side of the road we're on so long as we're going down the same road. You know, there might be times when when Blake will read a scripture and go, I think that maybe we need to look at this a, a little different way. And I'll read a scripture and go, nah, I think that's on the right side of the road, but, but we're still on the same road, right? It's not like, it's not like we're way off in left field where we're just like, eh, we're going to throw that out entirely and just be like, uh, new Jerusalem's all figurative. You know, it's, it's, whoa, Hey, let's, let's, let's stay on the road folks. And so I think, I think, uh, it's done a very good job of that. And I, um, uh, Blake has done a, a, gone out of his way to, to, um, mention often that, that this is not supposed to be a, a, a Micah or Blake thing. Um, I have, um, um, hopefully you will see, but I, I try to not post as much. And occasionally Blake will post something and he'll say, Micah, don't respond to this. And so we're tr we're try trying to, to, to get other people to, <laughs> to, 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 to and, and there's no offense in that. Like, that's good. The, the, the point of this is that we want to, to hear you break down the scriptures. That's what we want to hear. Uh, we don't want to just hear an echo chamber unless it's the truth, right? Unless it's, like, you know, something like we love the Savior. We don't want you to come in and say, you know, well, maybe the savior wasn't the savior. Like, nah, you know, but like we could have an echo chamber on that. But like uh, there, there needs to be a, a grounding in the scriptures. And, and I think we've done a pretty good job on that. I think that I think it's done a pretty good job on that. And 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 it's almost entirely self-regulated. And so um, by almost entirely, I would say I, I from, from what I know, it's it's pretty much entirely self-regulated. So. I'm really, I'm really glad that, um, um, there's a lot of people in there. It's up to like 200 people. And, um, I, I think, I think people aren't getting too crazy with it. And I think that there's been some things provided there. For example, like from, uh, Roquin who, who, um, says that he watches the fire, has to watch the firesides after the fact. And so we don't, you don't get a, but he does watch them, but you don't get to actually, uh, interact with him very much on the, on the fireside. But he has a uh, he has produced some very good thought out like w one of the ones that he he started to break down uh, where, with last day's timeline he did a Excel sheet and started to break down all of the um, different sets of scriptures from from Moses uh, Matthew uh, Joseph Smith Matthew um, Doctrine and Covenants uh, eighty eight I mean it was just and, and and what I do when I do my papers is I'll just list all the scriptures. I'll just say this and I'll just list all the scriptures, this and all the scriptures. What uh, what he did was he put it all in an Excel so that you could see all the scriptures side by side, which was a, a very cool way to do it. So I forgot what he even called that. He probably just said his thoughts or his his. Um, what did he call that? I don't even remember what he called that. Did a very good, very good job on it, though. Yeah, it was something basic. It was simple. And um, the thing that kind of surprised me, because uh, you may, may have not seen this, because he posted it, like, I think it was after midnight. And, of course, I'm, I work graveyard, so I'm already awake. But literally, from the time I, I, I asked him the question to the time he did it, it was not more than like an hour and a half. And so I'm pretty sure that like, these were things that he had already been thinking about. And then he just put them down on this spreadsheet. And and I love that he did it in the spreadsheet because for some people, I think that that media may work better. Like people may be able to visualize it better in that media as opposed to like me where I did slideshows or you, you do papers, right? 
there's lots of different ways that we can do it. And, um, and there's lots of thoughts that all of you have that, um, that need to be shared. And I also, I also don't, um, and see, people read my, my voice and they, they, they really don't like it. I thought Nate, <laughs> Nate was just hilarious, but, uh, when he was talking about how he heard my voice for the first time, and, but, but reading words, I think in some cases is even more difficult because there's, there's no, there's zero emotion in words. And so, um, you, you know, I, um, like th there's no emotion, there's no fluff. And so be ultra forgiving in the discord because people might not be trying to be offensive. It's just sometimes the way we write is just shorthand. And so it could come up, it, you could be reading it. It could seem very abrupt and very sharp. But it's just it, it, we're lazy. We don't want to type all that, and so, and so it, it's just the, the one of the um, shortcomings of the medium of, of having to type everything. And so, um, try not to try not to take offense, and to try to be you know easy easy tempered with things because uh, you know and and you you else you can do is you if there is something like this and nobody's used it for this, but I might suggest it is that there is an ability to pop into a vocal. Um, section of Discord too, and if there is something that you think, maybe just post. Maybe just have some people pop in there and just talk in, in person and just be like, uh, and hear each other's voices because sometimes that's uh, you know might help too. But I, I, I'm not saying that this has happened in Discord. I'm just saying that that can be a a, a, a mistake. I think in Discord that sometimes we'll read things that just aren't there, and so um, and that's why I've tried not to comment as much as well because. I, I think that sometimes people will read me as being sharp or upset and it's like I'll type something in, in 13 seconds and then I'll turn around and throw a ball with my son sitting here, right? And so it's like I'm not upset. I, I'm not – like I, I, I am one of the most like non-excitable people around. But, you know, if, I, if I'm typing something really, really quick, it might come across as um, short or whatever. But anyway, and so it because um, I, I I would just say be aware that that's the, that's the case. There is a yeah, Fire Nice. There is a vocal. Oh yeah, he just said that. Okay. Oh, you can read people's comments out loud. I didn't know about that. Yeah, yeah. There's actually a, a thing. You have to go to the individual comment. And then uh, I think you right click or something and it will say uh, like read comment and it like it's a woman's voice and it lit it, it's not like Siri or weird, you know, like those weird robotic. It actually sounds like a person speaking a little bit, um, which may be a little weird, I guess, if it's a guy commenting and reading in a woman's voice. But whatever. Anyway, for like fire nice, you know, it, 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 it may help you um, if that's how you learn better is by hearing. Yeah, and Lad White just put out a good point, and that's I'm tr I'm trying to avoid my thoughts, right? Micah has political thoughts, like Blake said at the beginning. You know, some of us had some hobbies like shooting guns. Like there there is a Micah behind there, but I I try not to talk about him because who cares, right? Like you know who cares if Micah likes fishing, right? Like who cares? Um, you know like. I feel like we can unite better on on the doctrine and 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 leave a lot of that uh, other stuff out. And so uh, I'm trying not to be to put my opinions in there. And I know sometimes I will do that. Uh, so I apologize for that. Sometimes and sometimes I'll say things that I think are common knowledge in the church, but just aren't. So I'll, I'll quote some scriptures like, well, you know. You know, the Lord won't do anything, but he revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets. And I'll say something like that, and then somebody will say, well, that's just your opinion. And, and I'll go, no, that was Amos 3.7. Like, I, I, I'm not, I, maybe I, sh you know, so I, I apologize. Sometimes I will quote scriptures 
and uh, and and I'm not actually quote I'm not actually saying quote Amos three seven. I just assume people know him, and I've run into that error a lot writing my papers, and I've had to continually apologize and say, hey, I'm I'm sorry. I, I should put the references for all of these things in here, and and I failed to do that sometimes. So there was actually a a quote uh, actually. Yeah. Well, in that way, you're like you're like Elder Maxwell. Yeah. Yeah, he does that a lot too. And by the way, I loved Maxwell. And so I think Maxwell is one of those ones that if you kind of if you knew the scriptures a lot, it it was it was it was so fun to listen to him because it was like he would just weave these scriptures together and just kind of flow them together, and you'd go, "Oh, that was awesome." And uh, you know, so I yeah, I loved Maxwell, but to to compare me to him is kind of like comparing a I don't even know what's a What's a minuscule thing, a pebble to a mountain? But I'll get there. I'm afraid. I'm afraid when. Uh, I'm afraid when um, Oaks dies. I'm afraid because it's like uh, Oaks has a, a very similar of my voice, and so I. I uh, I've often thought back to the the when the the spirit fell upon the apostles. Everyone, everyone heard what the message in their own language. And I thought that's what's so beautiful about having the 12 apostles and, um, and, uh, the presidency is that there's so many different voices. There's so many different voices that, that one of those voices, uh, could speak to you. One of those could be your voice. And, um, and I, I got really spoiled. I, I, I'll be flat out with you. I got really spoiled. I, I feel like when I grew up, you know, I was born in 1985. But so when I was old enough to listen to to them and really actually understand, so like 12, um, I've, I've been really spoiled because so many of those apostles at around my time period forward spoke my language. And, and I feel like um, that that the apostles in the last 10 years, maybe 15 years, the, the voices – have really changed. And so I'm like, I am like really like, please have the new Jerusalem before, you know, uh, the president Iring Oaks Nielsen dies. It's like, I, <laughs> it's like, cause it's like, they're like the last three of, of people that I really feel like speak in my voice. So, but you know, it's a wonderful thing that, that, that we have that, but, uh, with, with the apostles, I guess you have to be around for a while. I'm surprised. I'm sure that somebody that you know that's in their their 50s or 60s or 70s knows exactly what I'm talking about. That there's there's always seems to be two or three apostles that that speak in a certain language. That just that 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 they're all speaking truths, but like two or three people just really speak in your language and in a way that that just uh, that you know you can really understand it and speak speaks to your heart, but. Dude, we don't have any questions tonight. It looks like we've answered all questions. So. Yeah, people were just t t talking about my annoying voice. <laughs> ah. Okay. <laughs> uh, Reba says, can I put a small explanation of your method of studying scriptures? On Discord website, struggle with studying effectively. You know, I actually, um, Reba, I actually did a a, a, a paper series that I was writing um, enti entirely based off of going on YouTube. So it wasn't something that, that I had done before and kind of edited for YouTube. This was something that like I did specifically going on to, to YouTube. And it was, uh, uh, it was a how to scripture study and, and, and what are, what are some helpful t tips for it? And, uh, I wrote some papers and, and, and I actually recorded a couple and Ashley fell asleep watching both of them. And so I, <laughs> I said, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm trashing that. But, uh, so now I actually have that, but, um, Ashley thought it was very boring. So maybe I'll have to revisit it, but that's always a good indicator. Ashley's always a very good, uh, uh, what is it called? The canary in the coal mine. She's a, 
She's she's been that for me since marriage. Having having, having to take a step back and go, oh. Mm. Uh, Gabe Gabe mentions. Gabe mentioned he wanted to call in, and share something. Oh. Okay. Is he still here? Yeah, he just commented. He can, uh, if he's on uh, Skype, he can just call me, and I think he'll just be added into the call. Here he is. Well, um, it says that I've merged calls, but I don't know if I if he's here yet. Well, he says that he's here, but I don't hear him. Oh, there he is. Hey, how's it going? It's going pretty good. You're not here to make me awesome. try to pronounce something, I hope. Uh, I was thinking about it, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to be mean. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. Mucho gracias. <laughs> Muchas gracias. <laughs> Much, muchas gracias. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, first of all, thank you. Thank you both so much. Uh, the, the virus has been amazing today. And um, uh, there was a section where Blake was, uh, I can't remember what question it was, probably question five. But he was uh, uh, talking about it and it completely flashed the story from my mission uh, into my mind. Um, that's pretty much like my, um, I know I, I receive per, uh, personal revelation story kind of a thing. Um, but I wanted to share it with you guys because it's like identical, okay, to the description. And um, and so I, I wanted to share that first. So I, I served in Long Beach, California, and we had a section of our of our mission. It was uh, Catalina Island. I don't know if y'all are familiar with the area, but um, we had uh, missionaries there. So I was uh, sent there. So it was just me and my companion at the time, and. Um, there's nobody else. There's a small group. Well, I don't know about now, but there's a small group on the island, and we would um, help with sacrament and all that stuff. Anyway, point is that when we were there, uh, we were literally like everything. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, uh, Relief Society president, you can name it, call it. We, we did everything for the church, you know, uh, while we're there. And um, one of our our, goal, our our main objectives as well was to make establish a, a relationship with the you know the people but also the different departments of the government that was there so for example like parks and recs for example um we were really close to the people there they were really nice to us and anyway uh, we had an experience where we uh we would help provide service uh, with the parks and recs department and one time it was around uh, halloween near halloween time they you know the the one of the guys that worked there, he's like, hey, we're we're building a like a haunted house kind of a thing. You know, we should, you guys should come by, and we're like, you know, uh, yeah, we'll see what we can do. We're trying to you know avoid it, but at the same time, try not to offend people, right? And anyway, so after a while, days come, and and he's like, oh, you should come by, and we're like, okay, maybe we'll just go support, see how they're doing. You know, maybe it's not going to be too bad, you know. And I remember me and my companion, we. We start going to this place and, you know, we have this, we think it's going to be like this, like very kid friendly uh, situation. We get in and it ends up not being, this guy was like incredible at like, you know, decorating and stuff like that. It looked really, really kind of like very hollow Hollywoodish, you know, very, like very realistic. And um, we shouldn't have been there, you know, and I remember there was a small tunnel and they had to kind of crawl through and me and my companion are crawling through it. And. We feel the spirit say, 
get out. And I felt it, and I looked at my companion, and, he, and he's like, you feel that? Like, oh, yeah, I think so. We keep going, get out. Twice, right? We keep going. The third time came, the spirit was completely gone. Like, and, we, and you know when you're a missionary, you know when the, when the, when the spirit is gone. And, um, you know, we get out of the, this tunnel maze thing, and uh, we go outside. We're like, oh, crap, like, we should have listened to the spirit, you know? Like, we should have listened. So we call our mission president and let him know what happened. And he's like, yeah, like, you know, we kind of, I feel like it was one of those, you know, we put sacrifice over obedience situations. And so we had to go back to our apartment. And, um, and your mission president told him to go and, and, and pray until you get the spirit back and then go back out to teach. So we're there and this is when it happens. So we're, you know, you know, I'm praying for forgiveness and I know, uh, the, my companion was praying for forgiveness as well. And, and I remember I, there was a certain point where I felt the spirit come back and all of a sudden it felt like my mind or like my head was like zipped open and there was literally liquid intelligence being poured into my mind and I could not contain one tenth of everything that was coming to my mind. It had to do with the situation was about like grace and repentance and everything. But it was literally like liquid intelligence being poured into your mind. And so I remember when, when I read that description that uh, you guys heard earlier about Joseph Smith, you know, how, uh, how he described it as, you know, how the intelligence will flow onto you. That is exactly, exactly how I experienced it. And um, I remember writing every, every, as much as I could down. And my companion was looking at me like, what's going on with this guy? And I was just writing and writing and, and everything's just flowing in. And it wasn't coming from me. I knew it wasn't. Um, and it was an amazing experience. Um, and uh, when uh, when Blake was talking about, hey, you know, you know, uh, that sh- you know, whatever you- that comes when it comes like something comes like that by the power of the Spirit, sh- it should come to pass. I'm like, man, I want to go back to read my journal to see, um, you know, exactly everything that I wrote down to see what you know what came to pass or etc. I can't do that right now because I'm in the I'm not currently. It's all in storage right now. I'm in, in limbo right now where our house is getting built. Um, but anyway, I, I, I wanted to share that with you guys um, because, you know, it's kind of like pretty much exactly what happened to me, you know, um, when I received that that revelation, though, that I learned more about the doctrine of, of, of um, repentance and, and literally also like the whole grace by grace thing, which, again, was also mentioned. So it's pretty cool. Did I lose Blake? No, I'm here. Whoa. I'm kind of in awe at that story. That's a that's a pretty cool story um, to be able to like actually experience that feeling. And you know, like you have a good way of describing it too, Gabe. Like, uh, like where literally you feel like you feel this flow or this rush of like truth coming or mm-hmm. revelation coming. And you're just trying to like write as fast as you can to get, make sure you get everything down that is coming to you. Right. Yep. I've, I've experienced that too. And it's, yeah, you described it perfectly. Yeah. It's uh, it was pretty incredible. It hasn't happened to me since in that, you know, extreme, but, uh, but it's something that I will never forget. And, you know, yeah, it was, it was amazing. Um, I wanted to to add something else too. I, I'm I'm so grateful that we talked about or talking about the um, lectures of on faith, um, and uh, what I wanted to mention is this. You know, it's it's been great this past year, like really learning um, and and really understanding the doctrine, especially when it comes to you know the latter days and the upcoming events. You know, and 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 the Lord's second coming, redemption of Zion, all this, and it's really obviously super important. And, but one thing, like, for example, where, where, when, where I work, you know, I, I, I work with, um, with sales leaders and we t- to have a lot of like strategic calls. And one of the biggest principles that we teach is, is process over outcome. And what I mean, what I, how I want to relate is, 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 is now that we understand, or for the most part, our understanding better, like the doctrine of these things, uh, of the, the occurrences that will come in our near future. Now we need to put that as our focus, right? Like our goal, like the top of the mountain. And now we need to 
focus on the process, which is ourselves, right, and the faith, to exercise and or gain, uh, be able to gain the faith as, as the brother of Jared did, so we could bring to pass those things, right? Because in the end, you know, it is through that faith, you know, that's these events are gonna be able to happen, but our aggregate faith, right, as a people, and I think more than now, especially once once you have an understanding of how things are gonna roll out, the most important thing is to really just focus on you and focus on uh, and in your family and you, can, you, you know other saints around you on increasing your faith you know so that way we can as we... oh I think we lost Gabe I think we lost him. Mark, can you hear me? Oh, I can hear you now. You were you were talking about how we need to get up to that mountain and we can't do it by focusing on the group. We have to focus on ourselves. Uh yes, yes, sir. So what I mean is is focusing like like faith is the process and our knowledge of of the latter day events, you know, that are that are bound to happen is like the goal. And so process over outcome, meaning we focus now on the faith, having our goal in mind. Um you know, it's it's key. We have to we have to exercise our faith till we get faith like the brother of Jared, and we can then, the Lord can be like, okay, they're ready, and we can bring to pass all those events. So, it's just so important now. That, so I'm, I'm really happy that we're talking about the lectures on faith, et cetera, You know, because it's it's just so important to to be able to increase our faith, to to bring those things to pass. Yes, absolutely, and the the first thing that we learn is that we like you said we have to see the mountain we have to at least we have to know what it is because faith causes us it compels us to act and bring that into being and that's why when i i, I you know i've said over and over and over again why it's so damning to hold these beliefs that people do and people say eh, what's the big deal what's the big deal it's because they don't understand the lectures on faith they don't understand that it, that if you don't see the mountain, if you don't see it, why would you ever try to climb to it? Why would you ever try to gain the faith as a brother of Jared to be able to bring these things to pass, right? So we have to first know what's real and then exactly what you just said, Gabe. We need to develop that faith in our actions so that uh, we can we can do this. And the other thing you said was that we need to work on ourselves, not the community yet. That's it. That's also spot on. And here's the, we went over that today too, or at least Blake did when he went over the first Nephi 1414. At this point, the saints are scattered all over the face of the earth. That's what it said. Um, so when people say, oh, we're all Zion and we're all connected. Well, we got a problem because first Nephi 1414 says that the, the saints of God were scattered. They were not in a state of, uh, of unity they were scattered upon all the face of the earth and um th then they were armed with the power of god and with uh you know great righteousness and that, that so yes what you're saying is we might be separated now but we can't focus necessarily on what other people are doing we just have to make sure that we're armed with that righteousness and uh and and we sanctify ourselves and we can't do that if we don't have a, a correct understanding of faith. Exactly. And a correct understanding also of like what's bound to happen and where are we going, right? That's what I was saying. Like, yes, you know, there's the outcome, right? The outcome is, okay, redemption of New, of, of Jerusalem, New Jerusalem, you know, that's that's what's coming up next. So, but if we don't understand when that's coming, you know, what, what you know, we're, you know, we can exercise faith on ourselves, but then when things start to happen, we're not going to understand, you know? So it's it's so important as well to to know where we're heading. And that's something that, you know, I was expressing to my wife um, uh, a couple of days ago, too. Like, even today at church, somebody mentioned that scripture about, you know, the the power of God coming upon the saints, like in Nephi 14, 14. And, um, and I was like, yeah, I mean, that hasn't happened yet. It's bound to happen. Um, but see, I didn't before all this i wouldn't have known that i would have, i would have just yeah like there's that interpretation that yeah we will receive power in our in in all this but yeah but that's an actual event you know and and even last week in um a gospel doctrine class they were we we're talking about the sc 45 and and i wanted to you know i was just mentioning uh in a comment just uh well i'm listening to what they're saying and they're talking about all these different 
a signs of the second coming, etc. But I noticed that they're just they're not tying it to something. It's just like, okay, well, do you understand that there's at least you know four different appearances of the Savior at least, you know? And so if you don't understand that this specific sign applies to this here, then you know you're not gonna know when this is gonna happen. You're gonna miss the mark. You're gonna be looking for the grand dreadful day, and he's gonna be come to New Jerusalem. He's gonna come to you know. Uh, Adam on the almond, and you're still looking for the grand joyful day, but not knowing that he's already come to these other events. And part of that is because, you know, it's important for us to understand the knowledge so then we can exercise our safe faith even more properly or more correctly, you know, towards those events. Like, I know I want to be holy. I want to have faith like the brother Jared because I want to bring to pass, you know, the redemption of Zion, which is, That's again, you know, the closest events. Yeah. Exactly right. That is spot on. That's spot on. And that's exactly what it says here. If we don't if we don't have that goal, how are we going to exercise faith? Nobody would act. And that's why it's so like that's why it's so hard to hear people teach against uh New Jerusalem. It's like the New Jerusalem is the single most mo most beautiful pure things in our church, something that we can strive towards to get that is something, by the way, that Joseph failed to get the saints to fully grasp in his time period, and something that Brigham Young failed to get um, it, 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 the, the people at that time to, to grasp. They preached it and preached it, but but the saints just they they don't they, for they love the world and. Um, it, they they need to have a love for the savior and they need to have a love for that city and and to build it up and um i i i am shocked every time i do these firesides and every time i see how many people watch these videos and i think there is people in the church as quiet as they may be that that are getting it and they're they they understand why this is such a beautiful doctrine that we shouldn't just throw out. It is empowering, and it makes us um, makes us want to get there. And um, not only that, you want to preach unity, unity, unity. Um, get past racism. Get past all these things. You, why are we focused on racism? Why are we focused on these things? Preach the New Jerusalem. I'll, I'll tell you what. Preach the New Jerusalem and get people to buy into it, and all of a sudden, it does not matter. If Gabe is white, black, uh, Dominican, it doesn't matter what he is. If he is shoulder to shoulder with me facing Zion, I all of a sudden, all that other stuff fades to the back and it disappears. It fades It fades to the back and just disappears. And, and, and you, that's why you have to have these goals. You have to, you know, and... and God has always done that. He's always provided the goal. The end goal is me, right? The, the end goal is me, Jesus Christ. Eventually, you're going to... I want you to get to a point in time where you can see me. But man, this has been something that uh, has been a hard time beating. And another one that I can mention is Moses. Moses also failed. Jesus wanted to get the people on the mount. But the people were content with staying at the bottom of the mount. And... um. And, and and Moses was like, no, this is not good enough. You want to be up there. That's where we want to be. You, we want you to see Jesus. That's the end goal. And uh, and you saw when when the Jews decided or the Hebrews decided, eh, you know, it, it's comfortable here down at the bottom. That you know, eventually, just like Joseph Smith, Moses was taken. And um, and we've been struggling with that ever since. I and I'm so glad. Um, to hear your testimony on that one, because uh, with with that, because that's exactly what it's done for me. Like you just described me when when I learned about that for the first time, I thought, what do I need to do to make that happen? You know, what what do I need to do? And so I, I'm really grateful for you sharing that. Yeah, no, and, and thank you, Micah, for allowing me to to share to share and to to come on real quick, and and thank to everybody on in our group. I for real, like I I've expected it before, like. But I felt like at times so alone, you know, not being able to have people to to talk to about, um, you know, just the doctrine in general, you know, how it's, you know, 
I wrote it in my journal. I was like, you know, like I think I think I said it before in my my, in my wake up story. But it's like I feel like, you know, that one quote where it says, you know, we're we're spiritual beings having a mortal experience. Was like, okay, well then why do we behave like, like uh, you know, mortal beings who at times have spiritual experiences? You know, we this is the most important thing for us to do. You know, when you read the book Mormon for the Nephites before Christ, it was to prepare to meet Christ. And for us now, it's prepared to meet Christ when he comes here to Zion. And we need to we need to be ready, you know, and and again, we do that by, OK, improving the process, improving the vehicle, what's going to take us to that point. And that's gaining faith like the brother of Jared. You know, he also had a point, you know, he needed to cross the ocean. Right. And so he had that goal in mind and then he he continued to exercise faith until the point that he was able to see the finger of the Lord, you know, and we got to be there. We got to we got to see the finger of the Lord. We got to be like like the brother of Jared. So anyway, thank you so much. And thank to the group again for for your faith and for your examples and for I love the discord. Blake, thank you so much for setting that up. It's amazing. Like, I love that my phone now, when I open it up, has all these notifications and these different topics coming on and all spiritual. I love it. I love it. This is great. And. I pray that we'll be able to to help one another come closer to God and, and increase our faith and, and be instruments in his hands to, to bring that about, to bring about the new Jerusalem. And anyway, I share that with you guys in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Well, I definitely. All right, thanks, guys. I'll see you guys later. All right. See you soon. You know, the, the my biggest problem, uh, Blake, with this group is deciding who I want first as a companion when we get called on missions again. Right? That's <laughs> that's my biggest problem. So so we ha we have so many people. So we have somebody else calling in, but man, I have so many people. There it is. So many people in this group, I think, okay, would I take Blake? Would I take... Gabe, what Hello. I take? Oh, hey. Hey, mate. How you going? Oh my gosh, I <laughs> love the accent. Hey, g'day, guys. Uh, so my name's Ammon. Sorry, just introduce myself. I'm a, a West Australian, so I'm the average Aussie in the in the chat sometimes. Just just popping in here and there and saying hi and appreciating what you guys are doing. So. uh yeah, I thought I'd just jump in and, and just, just have a quick chat. And um, first thing I just wanted to do is just say thank you, a big thank you, Micah, Ashley, Blake, everybody who's sharing, you know, their, their stories, their papers, their information. Uh, what I want you guys to know just from me at the moment is um, people are genuinely waking up to what's going on all around the world. This is not a, a centralized thing. Um, you know, I've got a what I feel for myself is a pretty powerful wake up story. I'm not going to share it just, just right now because we're talking more on faith, but um, I just want you to know this is a, this is a global, it really is a, a global international thing. And, you know, even us little Australians and I'm sure New Zealanders and on the Isles of the sea, we're being touched and uh, you know, we're, we're seeing visions and we're dreaming dreams and, and we're having these amazing spiritual experiences where we're waking up to the time of the, the, the time that we're in, in the very last days and really understanding what we need to be doing to get ready for that. And this, what I will say as well is the strongest spiritual impressions I've ever felt in my entire life. You know, I've served a mission and I've done a lot of things in the church. The strongest, most powerful, most pulling spiritual um, impressions that I've had has come to me in the past few months with regard to preparation for the second coming of Jesus Christ. And, um, and what's been amazing has been able, you know, being able to jump onto YouTube, you know, a public platform like YouTube and see that there are people like yourselves out there giving out this information, sharing the, the inspiration and the revelations you've received, sharing the knowledge that you've gained over all these years. And just like the caller said before, just so grateful that, you know, because I'm isolated, I don't get to, I don't have to feel isolated anymore because of the internet. Um, you know, a lot of people around here are, are yet to wake up and I'm doing my best where I can to try and wake them up. But in the meantime, it's so nice to see that there are people all over the place that are awake with me and we can, we can, you know, talk and listen and share and understand together. So just firstly, just a huge thank you to all of you guys who are putting out that content. 
You know, I, that's can you still hear? yeah. No, I can still yeah. hear you. Thank you for that. You know, that is something that yeah. that's something that I've felt. I, I I don't think Blake has mentioned that, but I don't think I'd be putting words in his mouth by saying that he's probably felt that too. But that's something that everyone has said that that in this scattered state, I'll tell you what, I felt really alone. I, I you know, and and like I told yeah. uh, an individual in Discord, I said I had a little pity party for myself. Um, it, it, because I, I felt so alone and the Lord said, basically get on, get on YouTube and figure this out. And, and it was almost like, I, I, I don't know why I had to be humbled to get onto YouTube. I don't know why I had, because it's been one of the biggest blessings in my life to be able to meet the, the says he's average, but not so average Aussie and, and to meet these <laughs> pe people all over the world and just think, geez. I would love to be missionary companions with him, which is funny because everyone says that I remind him of the annoying companion. So I would want to be companions with all of you. All of you are saying, "Oh man, I don't know if you I." You sound you sound to me you sound to me like one of my favorite companions. The the thing that I love, and and maybe this is just our our shared personality. I love people telling it how it is. And one of the things that I love about your your papers and everything that you do, I share this with my brother and I. We're exactly the same. We love people. We're Aussies, right? We just love people to cut the crap and just tell us how it is. Just give it to us and tell us how you feel. And don't be don't be worried about the consequences of telling us how, how you feel. And I feel like all of your papers and all of the stories and everything you share, you're skipping past the garbage. You're skipping past all of it. And you're just getting right down to the nitty gritty. And you're telling us exactly how you feel. And that rawness and that realness is um, it's so refreshing in a world full of people trying to be pleasers. I don't need pleasers. I just need the truth. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. You're speaking my language here, uh, Average Officer. Yeah, mate. Yeah, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah buddy. Okay, so, well. So I, I don't want to I don't want to take up all your time, right? But I just wanted to share, like, because we're talking about faith today, I just wanted to jump in and act, actually, before I say that, I just want to say this one more thing. A huge spiritual, spiritual impression, similar to the one that you've had, to have to jump onto YouTube or a similar platform and do something similar. Now I'm not anywhere near as clever as you as putting together these papers, but I just have a very strong impression that I need to be getting on and at least talking about these things because, um, I, I feel like it, you, I need to be doing my part as well. And so, and I love trying to create content. So it's not something I don't love doing. The only hesitation I've had is I, I've, I'm always hesitating to, to think like, how do I present it? How do I do it? How do I, get started. And I think what I really need to do is just bite the bullet and start with something and something builds momentum into another thing and, uh, and go from there. But you've really inspired me and I'll, I'll definitely get on that and, um, get on that soon. Well, I, I hope you do because, uh, because if we get, if we get yeah. you with your voice, <laughs> <laughs> teaching what i'm doing with my voice I, I i don't think how i don't know how we can lose ammon uh mate we'll tag team it we're gonna get it done i'll <laughs> i'll definitely i'll definitely will and i'll i'll let you know when i start putting some things up i've you know i've, I've taken you know significant notes down as to the ty types of topics and things that i'd like to talk talk about so i'm not short of material to discuss it's just not going to be totally structured but I, I feel like people don't mind you know tuning in and just having a a spiritual thought that's not totally structured and and I, I think that's something I can do so anyway stay tuned I'll get on that my friend and um and uh, I'd love to be a participating more of a participating member in, in what you all are doing so I'll definitely get on that um so just real quick I just you know I, all these wonderful experiences and and talks and lectures of faith and I've been tuning in and out between some work and that type of thing. But I just wanted to jump in and share a really special experience that I had on my mission. Um, so I served a mission, I served in the China Hong Kong mission and uh, a large portion of my mission, a third of my mission, I was, I spent in a place called Macau, which is, and it's a, uh, it's an old Portuguese settlement it was taken over by the Portuguese for 400 years. And they gave back power to Hong Kong, uh, back power to China in 97, same time that England gave power back to, to China of Hong Kong in 97. And so it's, it's this cool little town. It's, it's very European vibe, but it's also basically the Las Vegas of, of, of Asia. 
if, if anyone's not familiar with Macau, I think it's one of the most densely populated places in the world. It pulls more money in a year than Vegas. Um, so it's a, it's a crazy, tight, cramped, insane little Vegas in Asia. Anyway, I served six months of my mission there and it was an English speaking branch. So for six months of my mission, I went, I reverted from Cantonese back to English. And predominantly the people we would teach are Filipino people. And, you know, if you don't know any Filipino people, they're basically the salt of the earth, like they're the sweetest, most um, faithful, beautiful people that would literally give you the shirt off their back um, type of people. Anyway, um, we were teaching this, this sister once and, uh, and the, this, the Filipino sisters that, that go to Macau are there to become domestic helpers effectively. That's basically the type of work that they can get there. And they do that. They leave their families behind in the Philippines. They fly over to Hong Kong, they fly to Macau um, to try and earn a little bit more money so they can send it back to their families. So they make this huge sacrifice, huge life sacrifice to leave the country in order to make enough to make ends meet back home. So it's, it's sort of a huge mission for them to like take my hat off to them. And but but work is obviously very hard to come by in Macau. And these women, they only have a very short period of time to find work before they effectively get kicked out of the country. So there's sort of a mad rush for these people to find work and to support their families. So it's kind of a big deal for them. Um, we were teaching the sister and uh, and she really enjoyed the teaching. You know, she was really uh, vibing with it and she was preparing for baptism. And the next time we met up with her, she said, oh, I've got some I've got some great news, elders. This is this is some great news. Um, you know, I found a job. I'm going to be permanent here in Macau. So, you know, we were super happy for her. But she goes, look, one thing, though, no, my work is going to be on Sundays. So, you know, you know, I, I get Saturdays off, but Sundays is going to be my work day. You know, we were told in that area, you know, we we, of course, couldn't, you know, we couldn't baptize someone in that area that, um, that, that couldn't attend church. And, uh, and so my, my companion and I left that, that meeting with that sister and, you know, had to think about it. And we weren't really sure what to do. You know, we, we didn't feel like we could tell her, well, what you have to do is quit your job. Because if she quit, quit her job, she would be deported back to her country you know, at, at the risk of not being able to support her family. And so we were, we were sort of not really sure what to do, but relied on the spirit and, and planned to meet with her again. And the next time we met with her, I remember sitting in, sitting in our lesson. And after we'd, we'd, we'd shared some thoughts with her, the spirit very specifically came to me and said, you know, I don't know if it was words or just the, the impression to me, it, if she quits her job, she'll be completely taken care of. As long as she's willing to, to put her faith in me, you know, I will, I'll take care of her. And so in that, in that lesson, I committed her to quit her job, knowing full well that if she quit her job, she could be deported, uh, she could lose everything, and she may not be able to sustain her family. And she agreed to do it on the spot. And I was shocked. I was shocked that the spirit told me to do that. I was shocked that I was strong enough to make that invitation. And I left there a, a little bit shaky, but I knew, I knew that that impression had not come from me. It come from, it had come from God. So my companion and I were, were like, okay, well, we need to, what we need to do now is everything we possibly can to support this, this, um, this commitment we've given. So we immediately began to fast and we started fasting in our, in our fast. We said to heavenly father, please help her, help her. If it be thy will to find another job or, or to go home, if it be thy will, but just help us understand how we can be involved in this. The next morning we woke up and something happened that has never happened to me before or since that day. We received a phone call from a sister in the ward branch very small branch and she said elders do you know anyone that needs a job and uh and we just about broke down and um and we couldn't we couldn't have been happier so we we called we called her up she was over the moon she you know she told us she was going to take the job everything was wonderful 
Uh, about a week passes, we go and meet with her again and we say, hey, you know, how's the job going? How's everything? And she said, Elvis, I've left that job. I've decided I'm actually going to go home. Uh, I, I think I need to be with my family right now. Uh, you know, everything that I've learned here has sort of taught me that I need to be back home with my family. Uh, you know, we were a little bit, you know, disheartened. But, you know, we, we, we sort of thought, oh, man, all of this happened to get us to this point. And now she's going back home. Um, but, you know, we respectfully, you know, said our goodbyes and, and off she went. Anyway, I served a few more months in that area, left that area, went back to a Chinese speaking area, serving in a pretty difficult, difficult spot in Hong Kong and um, not seeing a lot of success with people even speaking to us missionaries. I remember one day opening my mail and uh, opened the mail and out popped a little photo. And it was a photo of her with her family in their baptismal whites. And she thanked us for bringing her the gospel so that she could go home and share it with her family and be baptized with her family. Um, so I, I guess what I wanted to share is, you know, as long as we're willing to uh, be the instrument in the hands of the Lord, as long as we're willing to ex exercise our faith and give people the opportunity to exercise their faith, we can see huge miracles. And, and I know ultimately she followed the spirit and she did the things that Heavenly Father wanted her to do. And it led to the beautiful, beautiful conversion of her family. So, um, yeah, that story sort of just came to me as, as I was listening to the, listening to the, the teachings today. And I just wanted to share that with you. So. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And you and know, Hammond, you're, um, yeah, I was just going to say your story is um, it highlights perfectly the principles that we're taught today. Um, truth was revealed to you and your companion about this woman's situation. And as you revealed that to her, she then had to make that choice, right? Do I act upon that truth or do I not? And then if yep. she did act upon it, we saw the effects of that faith, right? It was conversion. It was her feeling closer to her family. It was her, you know, receiving the gospel, um, ultimately. So I think that's a very, very good example of everything that we've kind of been trying to talk about today. So thanks for sharing that. No worries, Mike. Thank you. And it, and it, the first example might've been to strengthen her faith. And so she, she did what you were, what she was asked and she got the job, which is a miracle. And then maybe the, the second time when the, the Lord told her, okay, remember when I told you that I would take care of you and I did? Maybe Even if it was only a week later, you know, and then she goes, yes, yeah. I remember that. And then she, he says, go back home because I need you to do something there. And so the first instance made her or gave her the, the, the strength to be able to exercise maybe even greater faith by, by leaving and in, in just flat out going home. And so, yeah, that yeah. a perfect example about how how we we not only exercise faith, but it grows. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's a privilege to um, to jump on and share that with you guys. I, I really appreciate it. And again, appreciate everything that you do. Don't let me take up too much of your time. Um, I'll get involved with you with the discord. I appreciate you guys getting that running. And again, thanks for all the content. And, and I'll keep in touch. Keep up the good work. I really appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Ammon. Thanks, Legends. I'll speak to you soon. Thanks. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Well, that would be a great companion, too. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Man, there's so many good, so many good missionaries. So many good missionaries in this group. Man, that was, thank you for sharing that, Ammon. That was that was awesome, and uh, that's the kind of faith that we're gonna need. And it grows, it grows line upon line, precept upon precept. That maybe you were a little nervous then on your mission, but uh, it, it changes now that you've seen that. Um, it, it grows, and yeah, that was awesome. Thanks, Salmon. Man, I don't know, Blake. I don't know who to choose from this group, man. There's just there are some giants uh, in this group. I would just, I would be honored 
to to go on missions with any one of these any one of these guys, uh, just any one of them. Um, yeah. I would just hope a couple of them would take and me. It's also it's getting me to think about. It's getting me to think about my own companions that I had on my mission, and um, and thinking about that as a possible opportunity to talk more about some of these topics with them because I still keep in contact with them, you know, pretty regularly. So I think about you know that we, you know, this group really is the gathering of the gatherers, right? So we're gathering ourselves first, and then we go out and we help gather others that will be the gatherers. Uh, in these last days and so I think about those people that you know that are spiritually receptive you know um, and again like Ammon shows uh, even you know people in Australia uh, people in Macau Taiwan wherever um, New Zealand people in all these locations all over the earth right now New Zealand that are ready to to hear this message and and then to share it as well and to where we might not be able to connect as well, maybe because of our, our limits, they're there on the ground. They're boots on the ground that are there that can that can teach and, and testify of these things. And so I think it's just amazing when we see the reach of, of all of this. And, and, and I've said this before, and I will say this again. This is purely speculative on my part, but this is this is my wisdom, and that is – you see somebody with, uh, you know, a desire to actually preach the gospel, like actually wants to talk to their neighbor, actually wants to, to share the gospel and to help people, not to make themselves. In fact, this is going back to what Blake said at the beginning of this. It's not to, to build yourself up. It's not to say, oh, I'm great. But if you are you want to learn things to share with others, if you have that desire to lift other people up, inspiration starts flowing, and um, and things start changing. And and uh, and and so I guess that's a little speculative. But Blake also confirmed that that's how it works in his life. But and that's absolutely how it's worked in my life, and absolutely how I've seen it in other people's lives. People that talk a good talk. But who aren't willing to that you can't you can't feel the fire in their bones that they just they want to get sent out. Just send me out and and and, and let's talk to people about the gospel and let's do this. If if you can't feel that, that like that that's something. And you know, I have never met or talked to Ammon before, but I felt the the fire in his words. And I don't know if Blake uh, has the same thing, but it, it's just maybe on. Uh, there's a fire in Gabe. It was the same thing. It's just there is a fire in people that that have the conversion in their soul. Just like I guess I can com- uh, relate this to the gospel. Just like um, Lehi when he ate the fruit. The very first thing when you have actually eaten of that fruit is that you look around and you say, "Where are my family? Where are the people that I love? How can I get them to this tree?" And, um, and, and I, it's just, I would love to, I loved my mission, but I, um, I also loved when it ended. So I wasn't the one that wished that it ended. I thought I'm going to keep doing this. And so I, I, I love hearing these missionary stories. And I, I love that there are people here that, that have that fire and, and I can feel it. And, and I can tell you that if you feel that fire dying, that, it's because you're not willing to share the gospel anymore. Just like Blake said at the beginning, you're not, you're not, you're no longer willing to share what you know. And if you can just keep that fire alive, just keep that fire alive to just want to share and lift your brothers and sisters up, man, doors will start getting opened up. Revelation will happen. And it doesn't matter if you're that last man standing in some cases, it doesn't matter because the Lord will be there with you step by step of the way, and you're you're going to uh, you're going to be lifted up and you're going to be built and, and supported. So, fantastic, uh, um, Gabe and uh, Ammon back to back, super good missionary. Because man is faith. And by the way, 
th why were the lectures on faith given? The lectures on faith were given because these people were about to go off on missions. <laughs> so the, it, Joseph said, I can't send you off on missions yep. without an understanding of this. have to understand you have to understand this you have to understand this before we send you on a mission and uh and uh yeah and you can tell when missionaries uh, and members have caught that and uh you know there was a story there's a story of a, a sister and i forgot where she was but i think it was somewhere in latin america that maybe i don't know mexico but the story was that she had a little notebook and she was always happy wherever she went and she was inviting people to to, to gospel related stuff on the subways and 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 I think and I hear stories like that and I and I just know so much about the individual right away so much about the individual and um, and and that's once again pure speculation but man I will tell you that somebody that has a burning desire to share the gospel it it it, it is something that you you cannot measure with gold it is something that um, um, it is a reflection of of somebody's personal conversion to the gospel, right? Or to anything, for that matter, even about faith with anything. If you really love basketball, you know what is a real reflection on you the, you really loving basketball? How many people do you talk about it? How many people do you try to drag into basketball matches? With any principle, you, uh, the, the truest and most basic understanding of how much do you really love us? Uh, love a thing? Feed my sheep. How much do you love this thing? Feed my sheep. How much do you love this thing? Feed my sheep. You really love it? You really love it? The, the manifestation of it is shown by your willingness or lack thereof to, to share it. So refreshing, so refreshing to hear other people's faith and uh, and desire to share it too. So so refreshing. So thank you all for that. Thank you all for that. And I think that uh, we're running out of time. So I will just, you know, I've just bore my testimony. I I love the gospel and I love sharing the gospel and and I I would be proud to, to share the gospel with any of you. I, I am so I'm so glad that the Lord humbled me and 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 put me out here to meet all of you i never would have met gabe i never would have met any of you and 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 uh now i feel like i know you and now i feel like uh, i want i feel like i want to go out back and you know sow my crops and do my work and then go off on a four-year mission that's <laughs> that's what i feel like now and and it's it's kind of weird because it, it's done the complete opposite like I, i've said i got off my mission and I really, really, really was okay with getting off my mission because I thought I'm just going to be a a missionary in my life, and I baptized my wife, and uh, and I turned every area we've lived in, in into the highest baptizing areas in the mission, and so I've been okay with it. And COVID happened, and it drove me online, and and now all of a sudden it's changed. It's I, I want to go back out and uh, and and serve another mission again, and that is so weird for me, but. Uh, I, I, YouTube has made me want that. I, I just preach of new Jerusalem and, and take it up a notch and, and, and go out on another mission with, with, with men like this. How awesome would that, would that be to be counted worthy of those people? Uh, I'm yeah, I, I'm ready when the Lord calls me for that mission. Amen. I, you know, I am now ready for that. And I wasn't before. I was I was completely content with just doing missionary work wherever I lived, but man, now I I, I am thirsty because I know that you're out there. I I, I know that all of you are out there, and uh, I would be I would be happy for that. So I share my testimony of the, the the principles of faith, and that when we act, the Lord rewards us, and those inspirations start to grow. And when the Lord told me to get on YouTube, when the Lord told us to do things, when we act, the Lord fulfills those promises almost immediately. I know that the Lord is real. I know he's real. And I long for the day that I can uh, be in his embrace again and we can build a, that city for him and for the, the Lord and God that we love. And I, and I share that with you in Jesus' name, amen. God bless, God speak, keep the faith.
Blake, did you want to say something before we close it? Nope. All right. Perfect way to end it. All right. God bless. Godspeed. We love you. Keep the faith. If you want to get on Discord, send Blake an email, and we'll talk to you again very soon.